Coming to you live from Ghost Island, it's Rob has a podcast, and now here's the guy who's here to say, I want those pastries! I am Rob Sesternino. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to coverage of our 32nd best season of Survivor. We're talking about Survivor Ghost Island, Survivor 36, and we're here to talk about it all. And we've got a great panel. I'm I'm really fired up for this one to talk about everything from season 36, Ghost Island of Survivor. All right, uh, very excited to have with me for the first time here to uh, talk about one of these seasons on the panel. Of course, you could hear her every week. During the Survivor B and B, of course, uh, it's uh, Liana Boris. Liana, how are you? Doing great, Rob. Thanks. It's actually been so long since I've talked about Survivor, like at all. And so mm -hmm. the fact that I'm getting to dip my toes back in the water with uh, Ghost Island of all seasons, can we reverse the curse on the season? I think we'll we'll find yes. out tonight. Yes, one bad decision can haunt you forever. <laughs> That's the theme of Ghost Island, and let's talk about whether or not that theme will haunt Survivor Ghost Island as we uh, get ready to talk about it all. Of course, uh, Liana and Mike Bloom did the B and B during Survivor Ghost Island. Of course, uh, Liana has uh, many other podcast accomplishments uh including currently hosting the uh rupaul's a drag race for a hop up uh the uh masked singer which is about to uh come back the masked dancer and many others here uh very excited uh to have you here liana mm -hmm. i'm also very excited to have here with us to talk about survivor ghost island very excited to have phil t is here phil how are you wow rob you flatter me Ooh, ghost <laughs> island baby we're here to talk about survivor season 36 and yes. uh i don't talk about survivor often so this will be fun to talk yes. with uh rob you know and liana my favorite scientist one time kellen bechtold said that amelia Earhart was her favorite scientist so i'm happy to be here with my favorite scientist Leon <laughs> Boris. talk about yes. ghost island and Phil, you are connected to this season in a lot of ways. Uh, many of your wand off hits came during Survivor Ghost Island. I was watching along and I said, oh, damn, Chris, that throw was great. Mm, Rob, it's dude, Chris, first oh, of dude, all. Chris. Like, sorry, sorry about that. So, you know, I, it, I get that so much of like, dude, Chris, like this is the joke. And like, you know, it makes me feel like a one hit wonder. It makes me feel washed up, actually. So you're out there and you you think it'll be funny to tweet dude chris at me actually still do it because i yeah, love you attention love it. yeah it's great uh yeah. but yeah no uh this is like the uh the spawn of my wand off uh career you know it was this this season has been uh like a very sentimental thing for me just because like you know it was my first kit kia you know we saw desiree get eliminated i was yep, very in drunk in boston baby uh, you know, I saw Liana Boris across the room, too shy to say hi to her because she's, you know, famous at that time. And I'm mm -hmm. just Phil T. Uh, you know, and then, uh, you know, I got in a big fight with DJ LaBelle Klein. Uh, then we made up. We're friends now. Uh, if anyone's still following that storyline. Uh, and, you know, uh, I don't know. I just very, very sentimental towards the season. Uh, you know, love me some Josh Wiggler, love me some uh, Michael Yerger, love me some, no, which is weird, right? That's a that's a weird poll. I did not. Uh, all right, Phil, you're a little, was, little yeah, sorry. I'm just like, right I'm like, jumping, right. I'm jumping we're in. We're all excited. We're all excited. Wow. I'm, 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 I'm riled up. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Josh Wiggler was the first person to ever stay over at Ghost Island, of course, had a great uh, night at Ghost Island captured in first one out as uh, we kicked off uh, this season, Survivor Ghost Island. And this was one, I have to say, I was not really excited to go back and visit. I felt like that of, of these uh, recent seasons, I felt like uh, Ghost Island, I feel like that's going to be like a little bit of a slog, but I have to say that I really enjoyed it here on the binge. And I really am wondering if like, as we've gone through these uh, seasons, if one, like we're probably way too hard on modern day survivor, like in, as in the real time. But I do feel like that also these seasons play a lot better on the binge. Liana, uh, what did you think as you went through the binge of ghost Island this week? 
So for me, I also, similar to Phil, have very fond memories of Ghost Island. I feel like that's when Mike and I really found our footing with the B&B. And Ghost Island, as much as maybe some of the strategy is not there, there's a lot of memes. There's a, you know, there's some crazy characters that we'll get into. And so we had a really fabulous time going through it. Upon the binge, upon the rewatch, I will say those super fun moments were still there, but I think I maybe remembered them a little bit more fondly. And so there was a, you know, a, a bit of time where I'm just like, well, yeah. can we make a, a move, please? <laughs> but uh, you know what? N knowing that it was going to happen felt a little bit easier to stomach. Yeah. Phil, how about for you? Um, I don't know. I, I really enjoyed Can it we well. reverse the curse on the season? Oh, that it's so much fun to me. Like, I know that there's like this big, like, what, like, what are they doing thematically of like heroes versus heroes versus hustlers? And then there was Ghost Island, and then there was David. They were just trying a lot of stuff. I right love the, the hamminess of like them, like, inserting like whoever's writing the copy of like every time they're like reading the idols, it's like, oh, are you going to reverse the curse of this dumb idiot in the past that made a mistake? Like, and also like, Poor Eric and like everybody yeah. that they're just like oh, like yeah. basically they got roasting like yeah you guys are so bad at the game and you probably already feel bad about making these decisions but let's just rehash it and it's it's fine it's it's hilarious it's comedy mm -hmm. yeah so it's, uh, yes uh, Ghost Island the idea the the you know and it's an interesting idea of like can we like ba make our props the star of the season. Can we take, like if you go to the survivor playground, we're never, we're not changing location. We're in Fiji forever. Okay. But what could we do a season around survivors, most famous artifacts, and then turn those into sort of like a uh, super objects that can be found in the season where, and nobody likes the idols, but what if we like, but what about this idol? Huh? The stick. Remember the stick? Uh, remember James's thing? Uh, you like that? I do think that part of the problem is after the stick and James's idol from China, like, I think we ran out of beloved artifacts very quickly. I think I remember Mike and I did a draft of what the items would be. And by the time we get to the fact that they had to repick the steal a vote and put it mm -hmm. back into the game for a second time, um, where, you know, it's Michaela's vote, I believe. No, who whose vote was it? See, it's such a blur for me. But anyway, yeah. it goes back into the game. And uh, and so I think, yeah, maybe a little bit of the bottom of the barrel there. Yeah, like I felt like that when we were getting into like uh, stuff that was like misused, like the idol that JT didn't play in Game Changers or the idol that Ty found in Survivor Ko Rong, I felt like, boy, that uh, maybe they're not, there weren't as many things that we could really like uh, create this backstory on as you would have initially thought. Hmm. That was, I think that was part of one, one of the issues here, where it's like, oh, remember when David Wright played a fake immunity idol on Jay? Let's bring, let's bring that back. Uh, and like that needs a second act. It, that was like, some of these things were sort of like the Haley Ford is on Survivor Game Changers. Okay. You know, uh, sort of like that. I don't know if these things were all stars that needed to come back. Like who's clamoring for some of these things? Like really, mm -hmm. if you're going to make a list of those moments, um, which, you know, I don't, I don't know what that says about survivor mistakes. Like were there just not enough or are these the ones that contained artifacts? Because of course the object itself has to go to ghost Island to mature. Although some of them don't mature at all. Like the David's fake idol, for example, apparently did not mature. So I don't know what happened there with the powers of ghost Island, mm -hmm. but definitely some odd choices for sure. Yeah, yeah, like all the narrative stuff about people, like about the idols, like taking on a life of their own and maturing and like literally like being possessed is like that's the kind of like corny stuff I love about this season. And it's just like really interesting to, to go back and uh, watch that. Uh, also, like, the, okay, the idea is that things when they don't get used go to Ghost Island and then they get powers, but also things that you find randomly around the camp also are like, oh, oh I just found Andrea's idol. That, that, that's amazing. And now it has it has these powers now because I found it. Like, it really should have been like one or the pick a lane here. Uh, are, are the things on Ghost Island or are they just you're also going to find random recycled artifacts around? <laughs> Right, because that so I sort of had it categorized as like the items you get from Ghost Island and then just like 
other ghost item or ghost island like type items because even i think uh it was wendell who found eric's necklace but that was just like hanging out on the mm -hmm. on the island that was not a ghost island theme but like it still fits the whole concept of uh it's matured and and you need to reverse the curse yeah, I do feel like that overall, uh, one of my biggest takeaways here in terms of, uh, and I like to sort of like uh, give the flowers up front, but I feel like that the overall like ghost island, like, uh, you know, it was from an aesthetic, okay, it was good, but just like set everything about like going to ghost island, what a waste of time. If somebody's going to ghost island, go to the bathroom because uh, you could just, just come back in two minutes. They get to eat there. They get to make rice. I'm sure uh, Reem, is, if she's rewatching the season, like, dude, are you kidding me? You go to ghost island, you get to eat. There's a bed. It, I mean, it was like a nice thing. There was like, like, oh, you're going to be away from your tribe for a little bit. But sometimes they went to tribal council without you when you were to go to the island. Yeah. I mean, I mean, multiple people. You, it, it seemed like a, a, a strenuous adventure. Like multiple people were crying on Ghost Island, Rob. Like we had, we had no uh, Chris. But Noble they were crying. Cry they were crying because it was all like, all right. Uh, like a producer was like, uh, so like, uh, what are you thinking about right now? And it was just like, and I think that this is a big problem in the modern Survivor seasons where like it's we get a lot of backstory, but it's a lot of like exposition of like. I'm on Ghost Island and it reminds me that, hey, at this point in my life that I've been through a lot and they just like sort of like have like a word salad of just like about hardship. But Relatable. everybody's story is like um, very similar. And I feel like that somebody who like uh, like Jenna will tell her life story. And like a minute later, I don't remember it because it's just it's just a, a, a collection of words. <laughs> it's like uh you know if they just dumped out sort of the word bag right and then just like grabbed them all and put them in the in in a different order and uh and, and i think also it just it felt very disconnected like don't get me wrong when they announced it was ghost island and then i'm somebody who doesn't like to take survivor too seriously i got very 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 excited and the stupidness of ghost island still makes me happy but when the majority of the time they go to ghost island and it says not today no game for you right Right. And then, so the, yeah, the half the time it was like, okay, well, like, uh, yeah, you don't get to play a game. So just sit here and eat the, and eat the rice. It's like, well, why did we follow the action here? <laughs> and tell us your life story. Don't forget. And, 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 and like, tell us about like, uh, you know, what's going on back home. Mm -hmm. It just, it, it, it did nothing. I mean, like, what was the best ghost Island moment of the season? Uh, Jacob Derwin doing Jacob speaking. Derwin, yeah. yeah Jacob Derwin Jacob got Derwin. to go there and he got the legacy advantage that he didn't even get to keep. <laughs> yeah, he he the the legacy advantage. You get to send it. He sent it to Morgan. <laughs> right. Not reverse the curse. <sighs> All right. Let me see what I had. I, I, I think, think the best one is Chris, Chris Noble went in the middle of the night. I think that yeah. was it. I right. think I think that's it for me too, which is oh so funny God. because it's not even about the part where he's on Ghost Island. It's about the fact that he had to sneak to Ghost Island. Who cares mm -hmm. like where he was actually going? Is this the yeah. first iteration of someone sneaking away to an island a la like uh, Vince from Iowa or like, uh, you know, like wh wh where else are people sneaking away in the nighttime? Yeah, like, I think that's that that when might, Survivor gets exciting for me. I think that might be one of the first ones where somebody goes on a secret mission at nighttime. I think that that mm. might be the, the, yeah, Chris Noble might have gotten started. In Innovator, baby. This is what it's this this is this is my uh this is the, the hill I will die on. Yeah. Tonight. He is an innovator. Uh so ultimately, like I, I don't know if we could redeem the theme of Ghost Island. I don't think that we need to like uh bring this back. I tend to not like on Survivor Season where we do uh different, like, oh, you get to go this place and then uh see if there's see if you come back with uh an advantage. So I that's not working for me. But I do feel like the thing that was working for me on this rewatch was that I know in the real time, people were so frustrated about, is Laurel going to make a move? Uh, Leon, and you, and you touched on it also, but I really felt like that the reason why you feel that way, I think is because of Laurel is really good as a narrator. And I think that she's really good at describing exactly the situation that she's in. And unfortunately for Laurel, like, I, I don't know if she had a good option the whole way. And she's frustrated, too. And she's talking about her frustration and does it in a really good way that, like, illustrates, like, where she is. And I think people were like, well, just do something. 
And I, I, I thought it was a, like, again, I, I thought that this was really good of like going back and like, you know where it's going and to be able to mm -hmm. watch it. Like, I, I really feel like between Laurel, Dominic and, and Wendell, like the, all three of them, I think are, are really good players. And this is a season that's like super top heavy where we spend a lot of time with our big characters. Like basically it's, it's a show about five people. Uh, mm -hmm. It's Dominic, Wendell, Laurel, uh, Donathan, Kellen, and throw in Michael Yerger. That's it. That's your main cast. And everybody else, they are the background players. <laughs> and then Chris Noble in the beginning until he gets voted yeah, out. Yeah, <laughs> Chris Noble. Chris Noble gets, yeah, he gets some... Uh, right. it, it's because he's a secondary player to the the Dominic story, yes. though, too, right? Yes. So. <laughs> he's like, and, and, and featuring Chris Noble. Like, yes. Uh, that's, that's, that's the show. <laughs> right. And everybody else is almost like, you know, don't even, like, uh, bother learning their names. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he's yeah he's only like a supporting character in that narrative because he's because he's harmless like right like he does he has this beef with Dominic but he can never get anything going because he has no idea what to do in the game and that's why it's fun to watch because it's like he you know he has this grudge he's tunnel visioned on Dominic for the entire time that he's there but like he's handed like a golden opportunity like at his tribal council like he yeah. has an idol he can stay if he just knew what to do and he just had no knowledge of what to do and he just goes out like, I, like there is a contingent, a contingent of people that would have worked with him and like they could have got Dominic, but he just doesn't know the game. Yeah. So it was just like, it was a, it's a sad tale for my boy. Yeah. Chris, Chris Noble was fantastic. I think he, he adds so much to the season. I, I really just was thought coming in, I felt like, Oh, that the post merge is just going to be such a slog to get through. But I really thought that every vote was interesting. I didn't really think that there was even like a, um, a dud of an episode because I thought it was really interesting just to watch like all of the different games that were going on between that you had Dominic and Wendell who were trying to play Kellen of trying to say like, hey, we've got this thing going on where Navidi's strong. And Kellen is all in on that because she feels like, yeah, Dominic and Wendell, uh, you know, those those idiots, they don't realize that I've got this whole women's thing going on where I've got Dez and Chelsea in my back pocket. That So yeah, let's get rid of the Malolos and then we'll flip the script on what Dom and Wendell, and then uh, we'll get the jump on them. And then Dom and Wendell, they are all really saying like, what, what Kellen doesn't know is that we've actually got uh, Laurel and Donathan ready to go. And uh, Laurel and Donathan are like sort of playing double agent of like, they're in with Malolo and like, hey, it's not fair. Navidi won't let us get in. Like, uh, I, I just thought that there was something going on the, the whole way through. And then it's just very interesting. And you sort of, and you see in the, in the real time, Laurel's like, ah, I don't know how to get around this, that I, I trust the guys and I want to, I want to work with them. I can't beat them, but if I jump, I'm not going to get to the end with these people because they're, I don't have a relationship with them. Okay. So I'm, I'm of two minds about this because the, the part of me that sees all of those pieces had a fabulous time, especially yes. because if you actually go through Laurel's thought process and Laurel's decision-making, never does it make sense for her to flip. Right. Because yeah. if she feels like super in and good with that group of four and then that group of four goes far for her to flip over to the girls, which would have been Angela, Kelsey and or Chelsea, Chelsea. <laughs> I'm sitting and <laughs> uh, and Kellen, then she's at the bottom of that. And so mm -hmm. that's not necessarily advantageous for her. On the other hand, I think the editing definitely does her a disservice because the number of times, and I like started counting them out that she says, and I think it's in actually right after the merge episode when she talks about like, when am I gonna flip? When am I gonna make the move? When am I gonna flip? And so as a viewer that's not like super paying attention to everything else, that just gets beaten into your head and you're just like, yeah, well, when are you gonna make a move? Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah. you know, there's two perspectives there. But nobody is like, hey, Angela, why, why didn't you make a move? Why no, don't you flip that. on Dominic and Wendell? And it's because Laurel is such a, is so good at narrating the yeah. situation that, that she gets the, she got a lot of airtime talking about like, like knowing what the situation was. And I really feel like that the, the fans and production dragged her for this. And I just feel like that, um, like I'll, I'll always be a Laurel defender. I know she gets, she gets so much hate from people, but that you have this game where she was up against uh, like two of these incredible like alpha male players that have like all sorts of different ways in which the the game is like really plays into their strong suits. They were 
unbreakable and that also we got like the final four fire making on top of that these guys are finding advantages they're winning challenges and it was like the the fans and production were like why didn't you stop this laurel this was on you laurel you, you one singular person <laughs> yeah it's like these guys have like our no. immunity and have idols at every single tribal council they're winning uh, winning all these challenges uh like she I, I think probably like was betting like okay well maybe they'll get into a fight at some point maybe the, maybe they'll break up they didn't and she's uh, and she's like okay worst case scenario maybe that they'll split some votes and i got a chance to get the malolo people mm -hmm. yeah she does definitely get uh like an unfair share of the blame for not taking down those guys but like mm -hmm. you know how are you going to take down like their bond and their friendship is so genuine. That's so valuable in survivor mm -hmm. that like you can't dismantle that by yourself. And I think that she definitely gets a lot of the blame just because like episode to episode, she's basically saying she's so perceptive of like where she is in the game. Like you're saying like, uh, and I, it feels like she's teasing us a little bit where she's mm -hmm. like, yes, it's I need to get these guys out. I need to get these guys out. This is the time. This is the time. And then something else happens and they stay. So yeah. it's like, it's always feels like that. She's teasing us a little bit. Yeah. It's yeah. like a relationship where it's like, uh, like, you know, are we going to do this? Like, Oh no, we'll do it tomorrow. We'll do it. We'll do it tomorrow. Like you always say that you always <laughs> yeah. say, we'll do it tomorrow. We never do it. We never flip. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, that, that's exactly what it is. It's like big move blue balls, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> right. Like it's just like oh it never God. happens. Um I and and the thing is is that the one time where I think she actually like legitimately in, could have potentially made sense was mm -hmm. when to flip over with the the women and and go with Kellen there. At, at what number? Uh I think that was what was that? Out? Was who, that when Chelsea? I think that's the, when Chelsea that's when uh, Chelsea so gets that's voted the final, out. The final eight i think yeah Maybe four or five six. yeah so that's at the final eight and so essentially what happens is that uh donathan and laurel are in the middle of uh sort of this split group where it's sebastian yeah. for some reason sebastian right sebastian um dominic and wendell and then on the other hand is the the three ladies of chelsea yes. kellen and angela and the family visit happens in that episode and, and Sebastian yes. wins the family visit and then brings only the guys for the family visit. Yes. And then uh, Kellen is like, hey, <laughs> this is not right. Did, did we expect Let's anything flip. less from Seabass? <laughs> oh my God, Seabass. Oh, what a dream boat. What an absolute, <laughs> what an absolute goofy guy. I, I love the man. Uh, yeah. Stony Baloney, the bagel, all that jazz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's a happy, smiley, giggly piece of laughy oh taffy. Just Banana so flavor. many quotes. Oh uh, like, yeah. <laughs> th like this is like okay, maybe you know it's not the toughest competition out there on this season. You got Sebastian, you got Chris Noble, whatever. But these guys are necessary. Like I view Survivor through like a, I feel like sometimes through an entirely different lens than like the you know some people of like I. I, 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 I like the gameplay, okay? I love the gameplay, but I just want to see something silly on TV. I'm just like, I'm just a casual at this point. I don't mm -hmm. know. Yeah, um, that's, I mean, that's that's there, certainly, in this season. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and it delivers for me. Yeah. So, Liana, go back to what you're saying about the, the final eight. Mm. Okay, yeah. So, and then we can talk about Seabass later because I have more yeah, to say about Seabass. We have lots to say about Seabass. Fabulous. Right. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, yeah. So, at that that final eight situation, I think it's truly uh, what what I would describe as the pivot point with, for Donathan and for Laurel, where they have this decision to go between the three men and the three women, and and Wendell. I like. I do wonder if it had been Dominic that had been the one. Yes. Uh, yes. that had could have been voted out because Laurel and Wendell just had this bond. I mean, <laughs> Wendell used his idol to bring her. I mean, obviously he didn't need it because he had immunity, yeah. I think at final five, but he brought her to final four. Like clearly there's something going on there. They were very close. And I think she was unwilling to vote him out at that point, but yeah. also she would have been on the bottom of the women. So. Yeah. And they had uh, an incredible bond in the game. And we see we see some of it in the show where like Wendell puts in a lot of work at Yanuya with Laurel. And like, you know, I think that uh, Dominic, he talks with Laurel earlier in the game. I'm sure he had a good relationship with uh, with Laurel, but Wendell really owned that relationship. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I really think that Laurel was not going to flip. I think uh, is that also. Does does Laurel have does Laurel have immunity in that one, or is that the next round where? Yeah, I think it's the next round. Even when when Laurel completes the puzzle and Wendell doesn't like uh 
he doesn't call it out and Laurel wins immunity and he does like he he lets her have it. He doesn't like contest it or anything like that. Like they have a really good relationship like that. And I don't think that I, that I don't think that Laurel was uh, going to, you know, uh, flip and strike first at uh, Wendell. I, I think mm-hmm. she might have against Dominic. Uh, yeah, that's the, that's the spot when they when they could have done it. But I think she just uh, did not did not want to uh, stab Wendell in the back like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And who knows? Uh, who knows how it goes? Um, it probably ends up with Wendell. Uh, Laurel and uh and, and also Dominic all sitting on the jury. You know, probably like uh they get Wendell, Dominic has an idol. All right, okay, we can't we can't get Dominic. Uh should we vote out Laurel this round? Like, you know, there's a very good chance she doesn't get to the final three, also, if she ends up uh doing that. So yeah, and, and that way she's just the kingmaker of like who's gonna win here. Is it gonna be like the people who I've been with since like day 10 or whatever she said, or is it just like you know, the girls. So like, it's, it's really, it's a hard spot for Laurel to be in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, you know, there's also an opportunity at the seven. Uh, but again, I think they probably needed, uh, one more vote because, uh, Sebastian is working with, uh, Dominic and Wendell also at seven when Kellen and Donathan are trying to get her to flip in that spot too. Can I tell you that this might be a little bit of a, of a hot take uh, on terms of like, you know, Laurel gets too much of the blame and I have to say, this, I, I, I love Kellen. Kellen is great. She was most recently on This Week in Survivor History. But I think Kellen is the person that had the cards to play that could have stopped Dominic and Wendell and didn't. It's it's interesting. Kellen, Kellen is super interesting. One, just because I really resonated with her her story and, and her as a person. But the whole concept of like, her, she's the one who really starts at least in terms of the edit to push this Navidi strong, Navidi strong, Navidi strong thing. And, um, and yet she's the one who then ultimately tries to flip it on its edge, but it feels like it's only after she gets personally, or, or, or maybe like, maybe, I don't know, maybe the, the light opens up when Seabass takes all the dudes uh, on the family reward and there's like some flip there, but yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, she, I think she was poised to make a, a, a move. She definitely could have done it. I think she had troops backing her. It was just too little too late when she yeah. did try to go for it phil what do you think about kellen on the rewatch because uh, that i feel like that she's a real like we call this in uh, the evolution of strategy the josh and i like the uh, jeff has a go-to guys and go-to gals and kellen i felt like was a real go-to gal for uh jeff and production for this season i feel like anytime they needed a metaphor she was there she's always there to talk about her gut rob and mm-hmm. uh you know, I think, yeah, Jeff Jeff loves that of, like, just the metaphors and all that. Um, I liked Kellen. I enjoyed watching Kellen. I agree that, you know, she probably had, like, a spot there where she probably could have made a move against the boys. But uh, is that, like, um, is that the Desiree blow up we're, we're, we're talking about or no? So I think that that's sort of like where I think her game. En- well, I think the next the next round is where uh, the game ends uh, for her. Like, it's, I think that's sort of like the yeah the peak of uh, Kellen's uh, stock in the game is right when she goes on that reward. She somehow like leads a crew that beats Dominic and Wendell for reward uh, at the uh, ra- at the final ten, and then she goes on that she goes on that reward and she comes back and Desiree. Is trying to like she's Desiree's like okay I'll make my big move I'm gonna get Kellen out and then Laurel reports that information back to Dominic and Dominic goes to Kellen and says Kellen I just want to let you know that there's a thing and she's like no there's not you're lying you're lying that would mean Chelsea she was with me all day that can't be as possible you're lying to me that's not happening uh, and she goes back to the women and blows up the whole thing and then Desiree is mad at Laurel like why did you, why did you tell anything and then. Everybody ends up getting mad at Desiree, but I feel like that Laurel also loses a lot of uh, stock in the game at that point because, like, it's like all the women lose on this because then, yeah, Laur- yeah Laurel talked to Dominic, and then now none of the women trust each other again after this because of uh, the, the way that La- and Laurel saved them. Laurel saved Dominic and Wendell. Um, yeah. You know, it could have been like that the bottom feeders were about to rise up. And then ultimately after that, and, and Kellen is like, no, we need to get out Michael Yerger. <laughs> right. And, and Michael Yerger, Wendell had no relationship with, with uh, Dominic and Wendell. Like he was I, a number for Kellen. 
I know. It's just like, it feels like, especially at that point, like the rest of Malolo is just trying to survive at that point. So like when Desiree just like self implodes, like they're just gonna like I, I think wrongly, right? To just like get rid of her instead of like targeting one of somebody like one of Dom or Wendell who's vulnerable at that point. So it's like it's confusing. It's confusing for me. Yeah, the fact that Desiree went after Kellen of all people, I think is right. interesting because I think you would have expected the the pair at least because even if Kellen is a power player, you have a pair power play of power players, right? And that mm -hmm. should I think be more more dangerous. Yeah. And so yeah, you're that was so definitely visible. an interesting choice. <laughs> like Desiree, they're so like, visible. Yeah, Desiree like skipped a step. She was like, yes. okay, <laughs> like they were supposed to stick together and then get Dominic and Wendell out of the game. She's mm -hmm. like, no. Screw that. I'm getting Kellen. That I can't beat Kellen if I get to the... Well, you're at the final 10 and you didn't get rid of Dominic and Wendell yet. Right. Yeah, exactly. You, can't, you, you might not be able to beat Kellen, but you definitely can't beat Dom and Wendell. So yeah. it's like... Ah! She, yeah. she, she, she looked too far ahead. Yeah. She was like, okay, well, yeah, uh, the, we've got like uh, all these women here and Chelsea and Jenna and, and uh, we're just going to steamroll uh, Dominic and Wendell and we got Donathan and then... Well, uh, she just miscalculated this and then tried to go after Kellen in that spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely a weird choice. That was such a fun episode, too, though. That was like, oh, my gosh, there's so much drama going on here. I don't remember this happening in Ghost Island. Yeah. So that was definitely really nice to see. Well, they didn't give Desiree has like uh, some screen time. She's not <laughs> she's not quite as invisible as like uh, Chelsea is, uh, but she just like sort of pops up out of nowhere. It's like, oh, this is my big plan this episode. I'm going to take out <laughs> Kellen, who I've been with the whole game. Oh my God, I'm not going to lie to you. That episode starts with her getting like these confessionals. And I was like, oh, this must be her boot episode. Like, I didn't yeah. even remember that yep. she went there, but just based on the way that it was edited. So I just kind of feel bad for her. And that's the thing, back to your point also about this is really about five, six people, not the mm -hmm. rest of them. Yeah. Um, and then at that next episode, it really is very stark because all the, all of the people that we care about in the game end up on one, like they do a, a split tribal council where everybody that we care about, everybody that's important is on one tribal council. And then it's everybody else. And Donathan, who mm -hmm. is sort of like uh, the, the B team are on the second tribal council. And, and, and again, the A the a tribal council delivers where it's a, it's a really interesting strategy strategic vote and all the players are there. Kellen plays her extra vote. And I think that this is like one of the really subtle things that Wendell does. I thought that Wendell did a lot, a lot of really subtle things in the game, but he ends up getting Kellen and Laurel voting for each other in that spot. And then they never are able to work with each other ever again after that. So I think that he did a really good job of dismantling that potential women's alliance of that. He like uh, him and Dominic, like, uh, but more so Wendell did a lot of things to keep the, the women firing at each other. And so uh, they're, they go, are going after each other. And Michael Yerger is coming out like, uh, hey, I've got an idol. And Kellen's like, uh, he's got an idol. Dominic's like, he doesn't have an idol. Trust me. I, 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 I've got a good read. Uh, she's like, no, no, he said he does, but they, it, it was a really, that, that was a really good tribal council. And then nobody knows Kellen has the extra vote. And then lo and behold, there's six votes at the tribal council. Mm hmm. I, uh, I, so I did go back to look at my notes from the B and B when yes. I had originally uh, watched this episode. I definitely had written the JV squad for the first tribal council, yeah. and because they were just it was so boring. And I think even Jeff in the tribal council is saying, uh, "So uh, this is the least number of questions I think I've ever asked in a tribal <laughs> council. So we'll just get to the vote." And then contrast that with the next one that's so explosive and so fun, and to see the the nuance of the strategy that's there is just really magnificent which I think maybe is this dichotomy of Ghost Island and maybe why it was edited the way it was. Okay. The season ends on a big note. Uh, I'm not talking about Kevin Hart coming to talk about TKO. <laughs> I, I'm talking about we get our first tie. Phil, it was uh, super exciting. Uh, the 5-5 five, five tie. Laurel is going to cast about. How, how did the tie play for you on the rewatch? You know, it's it's so weird because, like, it's still, like, one of those, like, survivor moments that just, like, gives you chills because it's, like, this is the first time it's ever happened. And it's, like, Jeff is, has this grandiose reveal of, like, I'm going to read the votes right now. And it's everyone's, like, oh, my God. Oh, no. Yeah. What does this mean? But everyone actually knows what it means, sort of, <laughs> in the back of their heads where it's, like, why else would he be doing this? 
Mm-hmm. And uh, Dominic admits, like I think at the at the uh, reunion, that he feels like he's dead in the water at that point. Um, oh, you like, can see it on his face. Yeah, yeah, you can tell right away. He's yeah. just drunk because, uh, yeah, you can't help but feel for him in that moment. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's 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 really fun. Like it's really really fun, and it's still exciting for me, even knowing the outcome. I don't know. Yeah, I, I love it because we've always been asking the question of, well, what's going to happen? And there's a tie. What's going to happen when there's a tie? And we finally get the answer to it. And uh, and it just makes for a really exciting finale. And the fact that, you know, you get a little bit of foreshadowing of like Dominic being like, well, it could only be one vote. No, no, no. Turns out it's the you know, it's Laurel's here. But yeah, the other thing was just focusing on on their respective faces when it's announced that Laurel will be making the tie breaking vote. It uh, becomes abundantly clear who ultimately is going to end up winning the season. Yeah, it was still a great moment that we were there when we uh, the the uh, live in person when Jeff came out with the one vote at the finale and it was like a really just like standing ovation in the room just a really exciting uh final tribal and then you know a really a really great reveal there for Survivor Ghost Island so really I mean compared to last week where we're talking about the final tribal council and heroes uh healers and hustlers and people are not that excited I mean this was a super exciting final tribal council Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're talking about the the actual discussion outwit. Yeah, uh, just like with people being up dissatisfied, like, oh, this is a you know, uh, th- th- you know, this is garbage. Uh, ben uh, that he got found just found idols. You had you know basically a final tribal council with you know who, whether whether it was Dominic or Wendell, like two people who just like uh, went like head to head and had this really fun relationship all through the season. Like there were so many times where that they were like uh you know th- th- they were partners and then also there were times where like where they'd, they'd be on like on opposite teams like in a challenge and be like trash talking each other like it was such a cool relationship uh dom and wendell right and like those interactions should be like signals that these guys are boys like they're they have the mm-hmm. like such a visible bromance like if they're like chirping each other in the middle of challenges and like I mean, I guess like that didn't matter. Like, right. I guess. Cause ultimately, you know, everybody knew Dom and Wendell were a pair, but like that, it, it just screams to me, like how, wh- like, why don't we deal with these guys? It, it's just like, it's, it's, it's maybe it's just a, a testament to their game, obviously. Uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's wild. Yeah. I think that, um, their relationship is so interesting where uh, it starts at the beginning of the game where that, of course, that they go through this uh, trial by fire with Chris Noble. Uh, the story of Ghost Island really starts off with Chris Noble. He's uh, he's uh, selected as the person who is going to be the captain of the team. Uh, they do the challenge where, OK, pick out like a uh, him and Brendan were the two captains that to pick people out. Uh, and then so. Uh, does Malolo win the f- w- win the first challenge? Yes, Malolo wins the f- the first challenge. Greatest I believe, tribe ever. I b- obviously, as we all know, but because I believe the fact is that the was it um Seabat? No, who was it that finished the physical portion first, which then ultimately kind of like disadvantaged the next person? Because I think Chris Noble pulled the. This, yes. Th- remember the, Michael the- Yerger. I think it was Michael Yerger versus Seabass uh, yes. in the in the physical part of the challenge. And then, and then there was a puzzle, and I think it was Laurel versus uh, um, Desiree. Desiree, yeah. And, and then I- you could pull the like the rip cord and make, right. lose the pu- lose the puzzle. And um, that Dominic says Jeff Ross had asked like, uh, do, so what do you think? Like, uh, do you, are, are you satisfied with the decision? And Dominic says like, I think we have put up the wrong guy. Mm-hmm. He was like, "Oh, I have a problem with it, or whatever." <laughs> yeah, which is crazy. Which is like, "Shut crazy up!" To say. Yeah, you don't no, need just, to just, do just, that. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so uh, unnecessary. Uh, completely unnecessary, but uh, I'm funny. You know what? Yeah. Um, um, for Chris Noble to to just uh, make the executive decision there, very bold. I feel like uh, you know, I would at least communicate and be like, "Hey, Des, like." Uh, you think you got this or should like, are we like, you know, he was just like, no, yeah. it's, I, I got to make the decision. I'm the alpha here. And then he just pulls the thing. And it's like, yeah. Uh, I gotta be honest. I couldn't even follow like what the stakes were in terms of like, all right, you're going to get a fire making kit. But if you, if you win the challenge and you get a fishing kit, but if you lose the fishing. challenge and you pull the thing, then you don't, you get a flint, but you don't get the fit. Like I, I, 
I'm lost. <laughs> yeah. right, right, right. <laughs> that was the other thing it's about this convoluted. season. It was, yeah, it was all about decision making. And so yeah. the first one is like, here, let's throw you for a loop. You got to pick two people, compete in two different things. And then, of course, you're not going to remember. One bad decision. Yeah. Haunt you uh, forever. But like Dominic is shot out of a cannon to start the game. And then, of course, then uh, Chris Noble is uh, not liking uh, what he's up to. Dominic goes looking for idols at nighttime. Uh, Chris Noble thinks he thinks he has uh the idol and then they end up sort of having like bad blood for the rest of the game and then following uh the first swap uh that it ends up where uh james Lim and the malolos do a number on dominic and wendell and they're just like down and out and they have their backs against the wall and dominic tells wendell he has an idol and really from that point on this is like an alliance that's sort of like forged in fire and they're unbreakable really till day 39 or I guess until uh, day 38 when uh, Dominic has put Wendell into the final four fire making. I mean, it's ca canvas print worthy. Okay. Mm -hmm. That relationship we get, of course, the loving shot. I mean, it's interesting because we see, and this is again to, to Wendell's credit, I think for really spearheading this, but to mention, we can't go after each other. We can't go after each other. If we go after each yeah. other, we're both out of the game. And so just continuing to reinforce the fact that they needed to stick together and then just battle it out at the end. Yeah. Would have been really interesting if this season would have had either Dominic or Wendell on Malolo, where mm -hmm. the tribes were like uh, kind of really uneven in this season. In, but, in terms of just like physical like balance, or like no, you, well, in, ter in terms of like the people that we knew, uh, right, like uh, okay. really, yeah, like Laurel and Donathan and uh, and Michael come out of Malolo, but the rest of the, the rest of the group uh, are all the Navidi people that we know. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I mean, I wonder because they did try to give a lot of credit. So like people like Stephanie, for example, who did get a lot of content early on. Yeah. I wonder if they had made made it later in the game, then we may have seen more like maybe it just so happens that the fun characters from, uh, you know, from Malolo went out early. I don't know. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, they just keep losing. Right. So they just lose. They lose Brendan. They lose. Well, I mean, they lose Jacob and they lose Stephanie Gonzalez and they lose. I, and oh yeah, they swap on the second episode, right, or the third episode? It's the it's uh, after the second vote, but it was a two hour premiere mm -hmm. of right, Ghost right, Island. Right. So right, it's not a, not ideal uh, if you are a viewer where we end up uh, <laughs> swapping so quickly. It's like one week, and then it's like a whiplash. And and I do feel like that the the worst part of the season is uh, this stuff that comes in between the second swap and the merge. I think that that's sort of like. It, don't swap twice before you get to the merge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Cause I think, the, cause then, and, and it's like some sort of, I mean, I don't know the Bradley vote maybe I think was interesting, but Bradley vote was m the more interesting of the two, of, but still, yeah. 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 It just um, makes it a casino game of like, you know, if you get swapped into a majority, like you're just going to like steamroll and it's just, yeah, it's annoying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you want to talk a little bit about the cast here because it is it is such a top heavy cast. I, I talked last week on the podcast about how um, I think I, I really liked HHH had an eighteen person cast. Uh, where here we go back to Ghost Island with a twenty person cast, and we really get to know the people uh, we get to know, plus a couple of other colorful characters along the way, uh, like a like a sea bass. But there's just uh, so many purple people in uh this season yeah i i i could not remember some of them to be i mean once we were back in the swing of things i was like oh yes of course mm -hmm. uh and and you know it's just i mean look i'm just like looking at my notes right now and the majority of it's dominic and wendell then i have a dominic and wendell like subsection <laughs> donathan and laurel chris kellen and then a little bit of seabass and then yeah. I have Michael Yerger is 18 in case I were, was going to forget that fact, but that was jammed down our throats throughout the season. <laughs> you know, we have Angela who, you know, she has the moment of, we have the gross food competition, but Phil, I mean, she is such a non entity in this season uh, here and she makes it to the final four. Right. And it's so weird because like, it just seems like she had like a very uh, habitual thing of like, betraying you know the people who <laughs> helped her like james Lim is like 
extending the olive branch of like your own people want to vote you out. Uh, I'm here and we're going to, you know, we're going to flip the script on them. And then she turns around at the very next trial or is it the very next trial? Or the, what, whenever mm -hmm. James Lim goes yeah, and she just like throws, tosses him right out of the bus. Like it was yeah. like, yeah. Uh, uh, it, I feel like, um, when Wendell and Angela are, uh, making fire and Angela goes, uh, you know, I don't care. Like Wendell is very averse to sitting at the orange. It's orange is cursed. Orange is cursed. And Angela's like, I don't care. You can sit. You can sit here. Like it's fine. Yeah. Uh, like I feel like that's very like poetic. Of like this is just kind of like how her survivor game went. It was like, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't care. Like you, you, you do. Wendell, you do what you want. You know, it's it's fine. Uh, I'll uh, I'll uh, lay at your feet. It's fine. Um, yeah, that was Angela's game. But, well, and the, that on and the, but then on top of it too is just sort of like very chaotic, very unclear, like what was governing her decision making. Because sometimes it was like, oh, I don't care. Sometimes, okay, no, I need to like go spill everything that I can to to Dominic and tell him everything that's going on, or yeah. like flip on James when she was trying to make a move and like feeling that she was on the outs because Dominic and Wendell and and uh, Morgan were going after her. Just like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> yeah, the one time she really comes alive is when she is the sea slug slugger yes. uh, when she wins the gross food challenge she's like dancing and Ooh. she's like sticking out her tongue uh and like I care. and jeff even comments he's like angel i haven't seen yeah. never seen you like this you're like a new person right now uh <laughs> it was wild like that's the only time that she really got animated in the whole season she's living her best life <laughs> with those bugs yeah it was yeah. it was wild. Uh and then of course uh we had uh the pair of Jenna and Libby mm -hmm. which right kind uh, of like you know uh what what what, what did they call her uh the angel of something Yes, the, she was poverty 2.0 of... Libby. Uh yeah. she was, you know, I uh the devil in an angel's the body. The devil in an angel's mm -hmm. body. Right. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. Um yeah, that was weird. I don't know mm -hmm. because she had that bond with Morgan Ricky over um, religion. Don't trust the cute blonde. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And then like she felt like she broke that. She was just like whips back of like, uh, don't mm -hmm. trust the cute blonde, which um, yeah. I don't know. Did did anyone trust her after that? I don't no. think so. Nobody no. did. Not really. So, I mean, yeah. so Morgan. Listen to Morgan. Uh, <laughs> There's a the out. I mean, and Jenna, the only thing I remembered about Jenna before I rewatched the season was I remember Seabass saying that your hair smells like a dead weasel, which is, I'm dead sure, weasel. is the thing you want to be remembered for. And they got that. together, but they weren't a showman on the season. I know. Yeah, but that was the moment. That was the hot pickup line where she was like, oh my God, I, I, oh, I'm taken yeah. by this I man. Can... And his, his, so was his he negging her? Your hair smells like a dead oh, weasel. Oh, big time. For sure. Yeah. But I don't think, you know, I don't think Seabass is calculated like he's like a doing like some sort of manipulative negging yeah. on Jenna. Yeah, I think it was just like an accident, accidental negging. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you had uh, both uh, uh, Jenna and, and Libby around who were just sort of like there. Uh, not a lot going on. They were just sort of like at the bottom of Malolo. Um, and then, you know, we spent a, a lot of time like in the first couple episodes on sort of like uh, what was going on with Malolo under the uh, Brendan administration, uh, which was uh, not not great. <laughs> yeah. What was the positive about uh, about that? Um yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> exactly. uh, you know, Michael Yerger found uh, an idol, right? They found an idol uh, together. Yeah. That was. That yeah, was, they were all in cool. on Michael Yerger at that point. Yep. In time. He was. I like, think that he was their. Yeah. He was their. He was their comeback kid. You know, he was yeah. a scrappy little uh, eighteen-year-old man. Well, production <laughs> loves Michael Yerger. Uh, I think that yes. they they invested in Michael Yerger, and they said this guy's going to play nine times. The yes, he got a ridiculous amount of content mm -hmm. for reasons. Um, I don't know. And then even in the in the finale or the reunion right. or whatever, when Jeff we gotta is go just, to Michael, we gotta go we to gotta Michael go multiple <laughs> times talking to Jane Clement. Doesn't matter. We're going back to Michael. Right, go back to Michael. <laughs> Yeah, they were setting him up. This was going to be like he was. Uh, that I think they felt like, okay, this guy's eighteen. He's going to play uh, twelve times in the next ten years. Uh, mm -hmm. We're just going to bring him back. They're going to. They're basically like bringing him in, uh, like uh, move over, Joe, Michael Yerger, new hotness, and look, very handsome guy. No, no qualms about that. You're telling me. Uh, 
and he had a big heart like uh like yeah. uh, and he and he was pre- you know pretty uh, you know halfway decent at the game but they just like were fa- falling over about michael yerger <laughs> I, okay so he's a big he fan of the show it, right uh, yeah no, especially would especially not now again? yeah yeah. Would he want to play again? I feel like he's got I think to... he might. I don't know. Well, I don't if know. He's Maybe still he's still a big like, fan. I think he's big into stonks right now, right? He's getting he's buying a boat. He's like a big stonks guy. Yeah, he's like big into the stonks, the stonks uh-huh. market. Yeah. Uh-huh. Wow. He, he, he was in on that. His modeling career blew up. No, oh, I don't know. Well, isn't he like that entrepreneurial male model in LA, just like living his life and buying that a, big a realtor? Yeah. Wasn't he a oh, realtor? He was a realtor. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Whatever. I I'm mean, just entrepreneur, like, realtor, just living mean, in LA. In my head, this is what Michael Yerger is doing in 2021. <laughs> you know, I know. I don't know. Like, I kind of feel like that. I, I tend to f- have, think I have a good feel on things because I like I sort of gauge like, well, how like um, much of like the survivor world. Like, it doesn't seem like Michael Yerger follows any. Like, I haven't seen him say boo about Survivor, not to br- make a Ghost Island reference, uh, yeah. since season 36. Like, he hasn't yeah. like weighed in or popped up uh, about the, you know, said one thing about, well, you know, uh, sticking with the show. Ugh, maybe it's all a ruse. He's going to just show up one day. He has to distance himself from the show. Maybe he's maturing on ghost Island himself. I mean, right. he was only 18. He needs to get a little bit older here. I'm not the sure. Ghost Island of life. Yeah. The ghost Island. Maturing. Yeah. Maturing <laughs> literally quite, quite literally maturing. Yeah. Into all right. a man. They, boy, they really, they love Jacob Derwin. Um, I'm sorry, uh, the, my, Michael Yerger. I want to. I want to talk about Jacob Derwin. Uh, oh. Let's go through and uh, talk through this the season a little bit uh, chronologically, so uh, we make sure we get to everything. Um, we talked about how the season opened, and uh, we opened up with uh, Malolo, and we spent a lot of time with Jacob Derwin in uh, the first two hours of the show, and Jacob Derwin was fantastic. Yeah, you got you got to you got to spend the time with Jacob Derwin while you have him. Uh, is it Derwin? Yes, it's Derwin. Yeah, yeah Jacob Derwin. Uh, somebody on Twitter uh, called me, uh, said that I have big Jacob Derwin energy, <laughs> and I was, was offended at first. Uh, yeah. But but when I think when I thought a little bit more about it, like it's it's very true. Like it's a lot of like embellished confidence with a lot of neuroses. And, you know, sometimes funny, very hyperbolic. This is the greatest tribe of all time. That's definitely something I would say. Well, uh, I'm he, honored to be compared to this man. I think you should because he came out of the gate and he came in hot and he had, a, uh, you know, he lost his shoes within five seconds of being on the island. <laughs> he said, you know what? I bet there's a clue to the idol in the rice. Oh. Dumped out the rice into his sock. Nobody's thinking of these things before. So gross. So gross. <laughs> to, you got to keep your feet away from things yeah. that people are putting in their mouth. Max yeah. Dawson and everybody who's doing that. Just stop doing that stuff. That's weird. Yeah. Yeah, Leona, this was like shades of like Ian Terry crawling under the couch to look for some sort of like secret veto. Like the first day of like you get these super fans out there and they're going to lose their minds. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, I'm sure losing the shoes didn't help at all. But the first two episodes, which were all in one night, was like this love letter to Jacob Derwin. <laughs> we appreciate you being on the show. Uh, you know, his his brash confidence of Malolo is amazing. Malolo is going to come back. The winningest tribe ever. Like all yeah. of those things together, plus the shoes, plus the socks just uh, makes for a beautiful first two episodes. Well, he comes out and he, at that first challenge, he like talks about it, like what a great tribe Malolo is. And then after he gets picked to go to Ghost Island, then he's like, ha, you fell for it. And I, <laughs> I, I, I wanted you to pick me. So now I'm going there like, uh, like even if that was the case. I feel like that. You, you don't like say that on day three <laughs> on the map. <laughs> totally just creating this narrative as it's happening. I'm like, aha, I Never tricked you. Me. Oh my God. <laughs> That is, yeah, that is so good. Well, and then when he goes to Ghost Island and then he doesn't even get an advantage and he has to give away the legacy advantage, he decides, aha, but I'm a genius. Therefore, I will make a fake idol. And then I think as believe he said, I have some damn good deception skills. So he really brought it to it. uh, Let's circle back to that when he comes (laughs) back from uh, Ghost Island. So the Malolo is going to go to the first tribal council and... They're going to vote out Stephanie Gonzalez for reasons. 
I, I, I never got this. It's not in the episode. Why did they vote out Stephanie Gonzalez? Who see like uh, they, she said she could have done the puzzle. It's not like she screwed up the puzzle. And she seems like uh, on this tribe that is, you know, uh, not like a great group of physical specimens. Why would they vote out one of their top people in Stephanie Gonzalez? It made no sense. It was a choice. Yeah, yeah definitely a choice. I mean, I mean, maybe it just comes down to Donathan getting out there, spreading his vote. You know, like I'm a sucker for somebody like Donathan. So I imagine like if I met somebody like Donathan in real life or on the island, like, yeah, I would just be like drawn to him and like whoever, if it's him or yeah. somebody else that I haven't necessarily bonded with, then it's just her. I mean, they never really explain, so it's kind of sad. Yeah. But uh, well, mm -hmm. I think she got screwed in that everybody for three days were like, oh, Jacob Derwin, first yes. boot, no doubt, no doubt. Uh, let's not even yeah. talk. Let's not yeah. even give another name. And then he <laughs> wasn't available. And then it was like, oh, wait. And it was like, oh, well, we can't have two Stephanies. Mm -hmm. I, I and right. I definitely panic. I think of like, well, I just don't want it to be me. Crap! I thought we could vote out Jacob. So first name, and if if Donathan is willing to throw out Gonzalez, then sorry, Gonzalez, but definitely a decision that does not make sense. Yeah, and they voted out Stephanie Gonzalez, and Stephanie Gonzalez, though, for her part, that she does like get up at that first tribal council, and I think that uh, Liana, we're starting to see like they they've seen Survivor game changers mm -hmm. now, like the you know the the Malcolm like group tribal council effect is now really like seeping into the game. It doesn't happen a ton in game uh, here in Ghost Island, but like it's coming. We had speculated. Better get ready. What's going to happen when they're able to see what happened uh, in Game Changers and whether or not that was going to be implemented. And sure, right off the bat here, we have Gonzalez going around doing all the whispering, which I'm sure did her absolutely zero favors. I mean, sh I think she was done anyway, but <laughs> it definitely didn't help. Yeah. Justice for Stephanie Gonzalez. Mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, like, I, I don't know if she'll ever, if she it, like made enough of a factor, but it seems like that. Uh, she, I feel like that she really could have done something. I think so, too. Okay. All right. So Jacob Derwin comes back and Phil, uh, Jacob like tries like uh, that. He, I feel like he's got like a pretty good, like poker hand and I feel like he kind of misplays it. Oh yeah. So I think he's just like a prime example of like a survivor fan who is like, I've got all this knowledge now. Let me put it to good use. I'm out here. Let's go for it. And then like, you know, they, they, they can't perform under pressure. They have stage fright and, uh, you know, and still keeping this narrative of, I relate to you, Jacob Derwin. Okay. Like this is, mm -hmm. I'm not, this is not shots fired. Uh, you know, and he just like, he has this pile of things, like you said, and he just like drops them all over the floor. Like, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really have the article. I left it at the Island actually. Uh, yeah. Who, uh, yeah. yeah. I have no idea. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Liana, I feel like that, like he could have done something like, uh, you know, that they ask him like, well, is there, is there a note? And he's like, ah, I left it at the, uh, I left it at ghost Island. Um, can you just say like, no, no, I, I want it. And there wasn't, a, and there wasn't a note. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and he could even describe, okay, this is the setup. We had to smash an urn and then you did, you know, like there's a whole series of events. Like, it. Exactly. Yeah. I was going to get an advantage that, yeah, they have no idea. They have absolutely no idea. And it just felt Oh my gosh, just uh, blah, blah. this is all the survivor knowledge I have. Let me just spit it all out. Uh, and mm -hmm. definitely, uh, yeah, that was uh, was not um, mm, not as well played, I think, as maybe it could have been or he thought it may have been. <laughs> yeah. um, and then they go to the challenge and there's a swimming part of this challenge. And uh, look, it doesn't go great for James Lim. No. They make James Lim feel like that uh like he he basically like uh steered into the t the iceberg on the titanic like uh james you did you did this and they and and he's like feels so bad so mean <laughs> yeah. about uh, james, james lim james lim was a, was a pure-hearted man he he was just like you know he he played the game hard and he, he never got uh maybe that was part of the problem of it is like he just like came off too robotic uh but you know he's he's just 
Ah, uh, I feel yeah, like he, he got shamed him after yeah. he goes, yeah. couldn't swim in the challenge. So, it's like not like everybody else was like really pulling their weight too. It's just like you know, just like you got to point the finger somewhere, I guess. Yeah, but also it wasn't just the try. It was that Jeff during the commentary, James Lynn, useless out here in the water. Like I'm hoping that James had water in his ears and couldn't hear because that's brutal. Yeah. Uh, Donathan did get the glow up there uh, yes. that he was able to to overcome. But yeah, they were so mean about uh, James Lim to the point where then he had to like take the the vote splits in case in case Jacob Derwin had a real idol. It's like I accept my fate. I was yes. so bad. Jeff yeah. told me I was bad. You guys said I was bad. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so yeah, then J so Jacob Derwin goes out then in the, in the second one, but then we're all, all of a sudden we're going to switch tribes now. Again, <laughs> again, yeah. again. So like, no. we just got, we just got to know these tribes. Like we yeah. just got to hear the story of, uh, of, of Malolo. Uh, but this is the, the, the finest hour for Malolo coming up where we get to the swap and, uh, we get, you know, a, an interesting swap where it is, uh, it is, is it Donathan, uh, James Lim, and uh, who's the other per who's the other person that uh, switches over? Uh, it is uh, on the Morgan vote, uh, Libby. Libby, yes, yes, yes. And so uh, they actually get one over on uh, Dom and Wendell. The only time that things don't go Dom and Wendell's way in the whole game, it was uh, James Lim and company here at uh, this point in the swap and uh dom and chris stay on the same tribe together uh ultimately chris though will go to exile island uh, i'm sorry to uh ghost island <laughs> and then uh we get this vote where that dom and wendell they're like that th they say let's try let's blindside angela mm -hmm. one of our own numbers they'll never see that coming phil because, you know, she's Chris's right-hand man where Angela is literally in confessional being like, I, like I, I don't like the way Chris is actually talking to me. So, like, it's very, like, from that point in, in that ending, it's very confusing because it's like, is she really, like, Angela or Chris's right-hand man or is that just their perception of her at this point? Hmm. Yeah. Well, I think the other thing to point out here too is that, and we we see this, I think, initially happen in episodes one and two, but by the time we get to, to this vote, Dominic has already found an idol. He has right. then made a fake idol. Yes. He has then showed Chris Noble the fake idol, but with the parchment of the real idol. So Chris Noble is convinced that he has a real idol, which he does. <laughs> it just so happens that Chris Noble has only seen the fake version, which I think is such an interesting move. I remember at the time when it happened being gobsmacked at what I was seeing. And uh, and then the fact that Dominic can later, you know, we'll, we'll talk about this later, but then play like, oh no, it's a fake idol. It's a fake idol. Let me show you my crappy shell. Yeah. Well, I, it's like, yeah, sorry. It's like, why, why go to all the trouble of like having this conversation with, with Chris where you say like, I don't have the idol, but maybe afterwards, like it's, I'm going to lie to him about having an idol. It's so, it's so bizarre that like, but it, I guess it worked for him. I don't know. I, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> like at the time, I was like, "This is crazy." Um, mm -hmm. But now I've watched Tony win Survivor two times. <laughs> right, exactly. And now I just I don't know. Like I really like I like is is Dominic's game ahead of its time here in season thirty six? We don't question. We just base our uh, our assumptions on uh, results oriented thinking. And you know, if Dominic you know got to the end, then whatever he did is uh, is it's all gold. It's all gold, Rob. Okay, how about this? Let me ask this question. If Wendell was not on this season, you know, Wendell gets cast for David versus Goliath. Uh, it'll be, uh, I don't know which uh, which tribe he would be on, but let's just say hypothetically. All right, he's going on to season 37. Is Dominic the winner of this season? No. Well, I mean, I don't know, unless he can like forge a bond with, see that i don't know like they're 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 so reliant on each other i feel like i feel like a lot of their momentum of like you know uh, them playing hard like it all stems from this like very sincere genuine bromance and like you know it 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 it, 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 it propels them to play uh a really good game I, I think i think they both needed uh each other like 
parts of each other's arsenal to like protect each other. I feel like that it was very it was very integral to both of their games. They were both yeah. Both yes, uh, they certainly were better together. Uh, Leon, do you have any thoughts on this? Like, what does this game look like if if Wendell's not there? I I think it. Dominic, which we hear him talk about his paranoia through, you know, and as it plays a part in the finale at the end, and he's like, well, I was paranoid the whole time. And then the one time I wasn't paranoid, I don't know if that's necessarily the case that that's the reason why he ended up failing in the end. But I think the paranoia would have run him wild and without Wendell to sort of calm him down, try to bridge relationships because we see it with Chris and, and Dominic where Wendell like has to try to sit them both down and be like, okay, now be nice. You guys have to play well together. Clearly that doesn't go well, but I have a feeling like Wendell played that role maybe a lot when it came to yeah. Dominic and his other relationships. Yeah. I think that Wendell, like uh, in terms of like good cop, bad cop, like I think that when Wendell is looked at like, okay, when Wendell's the good guy and Dom's the heavy. And I think that that was like a role that Wendell really excelled in a lot mm -hmm. of times over the course of this season. And I feel like that without that person there, like I even looked at like at the merge where, you know, Chris Noble, like seems like he has relationships with a lot of these young people. Like, and, and I feel like that because of the relationships that Wendell had from like Yanuya, where I think that everybody went with the Dom and Wendell side, but I could see a scenario where if Wendell wasn't on the season that Chris Noble's able to get like the, the Libby's and the Jenna's and Desiree and people like that to like, sure, let's vote out Dominic at the merge. I mean, we have even had Navidi strong though, too, as a concept. I, I don't even know about that, but I, and this is where, when we talk about the great Dom V Wendell debate, where I feel like Wendell could probably win if he were playing by himself, but I don't know if Dominic could do the same. Not in this I mean, season. He, not in this season. season. Not in this season. Yeah. yeah. No, no, he, like, he definitely has the gumption. Like he finds an idol on like day two or whatever. Right. Like he's, he's really out here playing really hard. Oh yeah. I mean, they not necessarily, like, exactly. Right. Like, they're obviously both great <laughs> players. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, it's just, I think it's interesting. I think that like uh, Wendell was really great at like being able to sort of like whip up the votes. I feel like on a lot, uh, on a lot of these things where that he was able to sort of like go in there and then like have a relationship uh, with Laurel or like, uh, you know, uh, s some of the other w women on the tribe, uh, you know, the, you know, uh, Chelsea or or whoever and be able to like uh be able to uh you know to talk with it. And again, we didn't see a ton of the side conversations, uh just uh, a couple of them. So it's hard it's hard to say like who's doing sort of like that housekeeping. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, well, uh, he's yeah, well sorry, go ahead. You go ahead. Oh, no, I just I was just like I was just, I mean, I don't know. I was just going to say like Wendell is just like effortlessly cool. Like everybody wants to be his friend. Like, you know what I mean? Like uh dominic is a little just like more intense like and and it's it, like together they just yeah. have a good balance they bounce exactly each other. yeah yeah i do feel like that when we look back to wendell in winners at war where like the the people that wendell was like kind of uh allied uh aligned with where you know whether he was working with yule or nick or like uh when he gets to the merge and uh like hanging out with jeremy that I think that if like if we could have seen the scenario where it's like if his best friend was like Boston Rob or Tony, where it's like that he was seen as sort of like the like uh, the like uh, warmer, gentler, like uh, like a more approachable person in a pair. Mm -hmm. Like I kind of feel like that. Uh, I feel like that that's his strong suit. If he was Sarah, right in in that <laughs> season, then who knows? Yeah. Um, all right, but back to this season. Uh, so ultimately, Morgan Ricky gets the she gets the legacy advantage from Jacob Derwin, but she cannot reverse the curse. Uh, she ends up going out, and this is the, like the the low point of the season for Dominic and Wendell here on like day eight or whatever. I mean, it's better it's better to have your own moments early, right, and then uh, propel, yes. escalate to success. Yes. This is the high point for the Malolo tribe also uh, because right. Chris Noble yeah. and, Island, and they're trying to get the votes on Angela. And what a master stroke by James Lim and company here on this vote, because not only do they get Morgan out of the tribe, they also get Dom and Wendell basically like with their pants down trying to vote against Angela, who is former Navidi. And so when they come back, I think th that 
really, I think it's a missed opportunity for this group. And I think it's like Chris Noble, I, from what I understand, would not throw a challenge, but they should have thrown a challenge here and gotten out uh, Dom or Wendell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's just it's so masterful. And you can see how hurt Angela is when they come back after tribal, like her own people voted for her. And, and, uh, you know, even inadvertently saved by the Malolos. And then I don't know. Yeah, what was it? Was it Chris Noble not wanting to throw? Was it Chris Noble's ego of then getting in the way of that? I, I don't know. But yeah. oh, it, it all comes it in. Chris just not knowing what's correct. You know, like, and, and it's, it's, you know, it's just like rec recruit syndrome of like, you know, uh, I, I'm just here and I don't really know. And, and, and I yeah. give him a pass for it, guys. It's fine. He's, he can do no <laughs> He's wrong. Very confident. Great. Great. He's I, very I mean, confident. Great. Very confident. Like, yeah, you don't find Chris Noble being like watching the show every week. <laughs> yes. Super fan Chris Noble. I heard he also thought about putting rice in his sock to look for an idol. Well, much like mm -hmm. Chase Rice, he was just trying to escalate his rap career by coming on Survivor. So that's why he's here. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. On my spot, this is completely unrelated. On my Spotify Discover Weekly, a Chase Rice song came up and I was like, ah, what is happening? Like they're listening to me because I knew was it was Buzz listening. back. I maybe. I, I don't I, no no no. Actually, no way. Of course it wasn't that. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so Angela was, uh, re really not happy. Uh, Dominic, uh, gets the legacy advantage. Um, we get to like a period of time where we're going to have two votes in a row where we spend a lot of time at Malolo of like the Kellen and Bradley, uh, sort of, they, they have the numbers there, former Navidi there. And, uh, we're going to see a valiant effort by Michael Yerger finds James's idol, but, uh, will the Malolos be able to stick together? <sighs> the Malolo really. low lows. What was it yeah. that uh, Seabass said? Yeah, but for now, I'm going to go with the flow because the Malolo can go no further low low than the Malolo low. Oh, it really Talk was a low for the Malolos. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That was Mars. Oh, yeah. That's a genius. Yeah, and and spoiled Bradley of just like <laughs> Wendell has built like this kingdom on Navidi, and he leaves on day six or whatever, and he's like, "Oh, I miss my king size bed back in Navidi. Oh, mm -hmm. my life is and so hard." Was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How did Bradley hold up for you, Phil? Oh, incredible, incredible, incredible. Because you know, it's just like a lot of that, like that villain confidence. Uh, where they, it, it, it just, he falls flat on his face and, you know, it's like, it's so juicy and delicious to see this, the, the comeuppance of Bradley. He's so confident and he like, I don't typically like when, you know, you, you, you sort of self like, uh, appoint yourself as the villain. And that's kind of what Bradley did, but it's just, it's so delicious to, 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 to watch him on TV. He's great. Yeah. He's incredible. He, he makes for fantastic television. And I remember him being rude, but I didn't realize like what a dick he is in this he season. He refers to himself as a dick on the show. Exactly. And I remember at the time, because we did Casuals Corner that week, where everybody's like, you can't say that on TV, blah, blah, blah. It's this big deal. And Just wow, it. Bradley, a trailblazer. Yeah. So, yeah. So absolutely condescending and just like terrible to every single person. Like just coming back from challenges where the person is already <laughs> defeated. And then he's, they're like, oh my God, guys, I'm so sorry. And he's like, oh, you probably had too much coffee. Like, yeah. What are you saying, dude? Are you <laughs> kidding me? Like, yeah. Oh. And so, like, he, you see, like, Brendan and uh, Stephanie, like, trying to, like, plea to Bradley. He's like, well, we have the number. So, you know, we'll kind of, so. we'll, we'll, it's like, it's kind of <laughs> pointless for you guys. And, uh, but Michael Yerger does find James's idol. And there is, like, an exciting, like, tribal council moment where I thought Michael Yerger has, uh, like, a good story that he tells. But basically, like, hey, James got voted out with two idols so I can get to protect two people. Uh, and, and we're all voting for Bradley. So you better flip. So it was as good as anything, but ultimately he tries, he saves Stephanie, uh, but the votes come in for Brendan. Uh, one tribal council too early. Yeah. What tribal council too early? 
And then, and then the next episode is all about how Stephanie is like gonna like she wants this so badly, and then ultimately, uh, you know, she goes out here in this spot. Mm -hmm. And this is where I will say that we're entering like sort of like the soft underbelly of Ghost Island. What do you mean? This is like uh, you know, other than we get uh, you know, dude, Chris, that throw was great in the fifth episode. Like, I feel like that the Stephanie boot is not that exciting mm -hmm. and then yeah. we're gonna swap again and this is i feel like uh you know the the real doldrums of the season i think that's the moment and i don't know if it's because they're of the, the the misplayed idol from the last tribal council but the fact that then none of the malolos vote together stephanie is voted out effectively unanimously james is voted out effectively unanimously it just feels like the malolos have completely given up they're like no, no i'm sorry and no. not for anything you have a season all about take a chance go like <laughs> stephanie dead to rights in the game yeah. clearly the person who's going home next gets sent to ghost island all right here we go baby no game <laughs> No game. Really? It's so Don't bad. Don't say the show is rigged, anybody. <laughs> Don't say the show is rigged. If the <sighs> show is rigged, Stephanie would get a chance. I know. She would get a something. Game. Something. Give her a shot chance. to win an idol here. <laughs> At least the chance. They pre-made all those urns beforehand. They didn't nope. realize. Give Just her no a chance. sleepover for Stephanie. Just a yeah, sleepover. Yeah, enjoy some rice on Exile yeah. Island. Sorry, yeah. Sorry, Ghost Island. Um. And then, and then we're gonna swap again. Also, that just to fact check myself before I, it's probably too late because I'm probably getting the the tweets already. But uh, also, Laurel got swapped to uh, Navidi, of course, uh, mm -hmm. because her and uh, Donathan end up making the relationship with uh, Chris, oh, I'm sorry, with uh, Dom and Wendell at mm -hmm. that point. But then, so we go to another swap, and we go, and now we bring in the third tribe, Yanuya. Uh, and now Wendell and uh, Chris get to bond a little bit. Wendell's going to find an idol at Yanuya. Uh, poor James Lim is going to go out because uh, Phil a Angela won't vote to save him. Why, Angela? Why? So <laughs> sad. So yeah. You. I mean, it was a self. It wasn't like, hey, Angela, I'm doing this for you. But, you know, he. he oh! Yeah, she so never sad. like works with like Kellen or a uh, Desiree uh, again in the season. Like it wasn't like no. that those are her as close allies. What what was she think? Why? <laughs> like at least there's something there with James Lim. If you like you you know, you are now like there is there is uh there is a previous game evidence that you know he is willing to go to bat for you. And nah, it's fine. See you later, James. Yep. Angela. Yeah. Angela. Yeah, feels feels so bad. But st mm -hmm. also, stop swapping so much. It's not fair. No, it's three swaps. There's three mm -hmm. swaps. Uh, that uh, this this is it. Uh, yeah. And then uh, we do it in the in the seventh episode uh, before we get to the merge. Uh, we do have the uh, Brad the fall of Bradley, and <sighs> you know that Liana that I I'm from interviewing the cast that uh, this was clearly like Dominic threw this challenge here to get Bradley out. I don't think they show us anymore when people are throwing challenges. I I mean, no. The only reason that I knew of it was because of all of the postseason press. And uh, because you would have no idea that it was actually thrown. Which, it <laughs> with the Malolo lows, this is a Malolo high. But, oh, no, they had to throw it. So, mm. mm -hmm. <laughs> and they try to stay away from it in the editing and everything. I mean, clearly, the there was momentum there to get Bradley out. So, I, I would have loved to have seen it. Yeah. I'm, I wish they had well, shown it. Yeah, Phil, they have to play it up because Malolo, that uh, Desiree said, hey, we have to burn the flag. It's bad juju. Right, right. They burned the flag true. and then they didn't go to tribal council. Wow. And if Dominic Ooh. throwing the challenge, it took away that, that curve. I, I, one of the things I hated so much in this season <laughs> was that this is the season that made orange and purple a thing of uh, orange is cursed and purple is awesome and we're gonna go right back to it in season 37 and that, that was it, it was not a thing before this but uh <laughs> orange is bad purple is good on survivor but they burned the flag the curse is over i thought they fixed uh, that even in the reward challenges like oh the <laughs> curse of orange is still stop <laughs> making curses a thing 
It's oh Ghost Island. Oh my god. It's Ghost Island. One, one, one wait, I'm gonna quote the show. I don't even know what it is. One bad decision one can bad haunt decision you forever. Yes. It doesn't matter if you burn the flag, all right? Forever is forever, okay? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so much bad juju if you're on an orange uh, tribe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. We get to the merge and we get one of the greatest merge episodes of all time here with the fall of Chris Noble. Uh, <sighs> Phil, there was so, there was so much to go back and enjoy. Oh, I, I loved it. Uh, just the, the very beginning where Wendell's like, okay, I've been on a tribe with Chris. Dom's my boy. I'm going to be the diplomat here. I'm going to get them on the same page. If we want to get deep in this game, we have to work together. And Chris Noble is just stubborn as and is like, uh, you know, I, I'm not doing that. But it's just, like, no tact. Like, even if you don't want Dominic, like, don't tell him to his face. Like, stop that. Yeah. Yeah. Why? <laughs> It's like, all right, I've been working with Chris for the last six days. Uh, let's let's have a powwow. And he and he brings together Dom and Chris and Wendell's like, hey, look, we need to work together. We're a group. And then uh, Wendell says, okay, any of those three women over there, let's let's vote them out. He's pointing to, I guess, Libby and Jenna. And uh, I, I'm not sure who else is uh, over there. Oh, yeah. wait, no, 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 no. That's Navidi. Yeah. Anyway, so he's like, uh, any of those women? And Chris Noble's like, well, I, I just got here. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Uh, and he's like, well, Wendell's like, but any of them? Is that it? Like, well, how can I say? I guess that right now. Uh, and uh, then, and then even Wendell's like, all right, I had it. I had it. That's it. He's got to go. Try to make it work. <laughs> Wendell, oh. the diplomat, is just done with Chris Noble. And he's, so, just, he's such uh, a patient man. And he just, he's just like, whatever. Mm -hmm. I can't yeah. do this. Yeah, but like, even Chris, if you think that he has an idol, that Dominic has an idol, just well, why are you doing this? Like, never put he's him gonna on edge. Put on the two of them. Now he's gonna oh, split yes, that's on, right. On I on forgot. Two. The kindergarten teacher leading yeah. all his little ducklings down to the well knew that he had all of yeah, them. Like, you see, you see, you see, this is what it happens with him. Uh, <laughs> Wendell's like, I know, I know. Well, so, uh, but Chris Noble, he got the buff that had a note in it, and the note said, Sneak to Ghost Island. And Phil, he makes history. Wow, he sneaks away to Ghost Island and finds an wait. He plays a game, right? He gets to hey, play yes. the game. He gets to, yeah. Yes, so he plays he gets, the, he gets an idol, and then uh, for if he that if it basically was it doubles or is it one extra tribal council? I think it's one one additional tribal council every time he gets yes, but if he gets no, he loses his vote. So he does mm -hmm. it once. And now his idol is good for two tribal councils. He's like, I got to get more power. I need more power mm -hmm. in the game. Uh, he, and he goes back to the well and then gets no vote. Well, he'll and he'll never lose his idol though. Okay, so he will always have his idol. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I think that was one of the things. What was the, the thing he said? He was like, "Do you want to risk it?" And he was like, "Hell yeah!" <laughs> oh no, mm -hmm. do you want to risk it again? You bet your ass. Like, yeah, you go, Chris Noble. <laughs> Yeah, finally, like uh, they, they got somebody who was uh, willing to take some chances in Chris Noble. Leon, from a strategic standpoint, was this the right move? Do you keep do you keep gambling or do you, are you concerned about losing the vote here? I mean, he's so convinced that he has everybody. So I guess although what did, what what number did they merge at? Was his vote going to be necessary? 13 okay so i mean it look if he thinks he's got the numbers it doesn't matter right he's got plenty of people he can definitely risk it and just try to get get that immunity idol as good as long as possible uh, yeah. but oh chris you had the idol it was only good for two rounds jt's idol it was jt's idol, oh, JT's uh, idol now chris noble could not reverse the curse uh, but phil no. uh, this is we get like one of like the best edited survivor sequences in the show's history where you have like dom talking about how like uh, chris is an idiot uh and then uh chris is talking about about dom and they're just they're going back and forth and uh it's just like uh jeff talked about this in the season 40 press about how like they're like these these are the kinds of uh chances that the editing is taking and this really works for me yeah i uh i i honestly i i it, it's such a it's such an interesting uh, spat between the two of these guys just like Chris Noble, I feel like it's hard because he's like he's just like such an airhead, and Dominic is just so frustrated with him. 
And I like to see the kinds of things uh, play out where um, Chris Noble. Uh, anyways, I don't know what I'm even talking about, Rob, to be honest. Uh, I think, I, I don't isn't know. this when we get the suave line as well, oh, even though right. we already got oh, beneficiary, I think earlier, I'm too right. suave for this. It's his accent. It's his accent. It's, it's the accent. Uh, he's yes. too suave. It's beautiful. Yeah, this, this episode is, is beautifully edited. I love this episode. You know, we're pitching me BS. I'm too suave to just buy it. <laughs> Boom. Anyone? And he was. Uh, <laughs> he gets up and then takes everybody off to go to the well and says, hey, mm -hmm. basically, we're going to split the vote on uh, on D Dom and Wendell. How about that? Aha. Uh, yeah. he, he's he's done it again. Chris yeah. Noble. All we right, guys. Wendell, back it in. Yeah, we see Wendell uh, like saying like, hey, like, uh, I think that this should be a democracy, not a dictatorship. What do you say? Let's uh, come with me. And, uh, you know, they're able to like get all the votes uh, back where the only people who uh, then everybody votes for Chris, except for Angela and Desiree <laughs> uh, put two votes on Libby. They don't get the plan, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, uh, but and it, it doesn't even matter that we don't know why that happened because there was too much. There's yeah. too much good stuff in the episode. Like, you know, well, I think that the reason is they feel like okay, well, those are, that's Chris's core. Of mm -hmm. the, we can't trust them. They'll tell Chris, so uh, don't tell Angela or Desiree. Uh, I feel like we did not get to see enough of the uh, Chris and Desiree relationship. I didn't realize that they were so close, even now that you guys are talking about it. And I just literally just yeah. watched the season. Yeah. Well, I think that we were robbed of ever getting to see Navidi, original Navidi, go to a tribal council. Because I think that from what I understand, yeah. I think original Navidi would have been split along the lines of Dom, Wendell, Kellen, uh, Bradley. And I'm not sure who uh, their was on their Morgan, side. And I think. Morgan. Yeah, that would have been their five. And then the uh, and then there was like Chris's five, which I guess would have been uh, Chris, Angela, uh, Desiree. Uh, I'm not sure who Chelsea. 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 Yeah. That yeah. was going to be, you know, uh, uh, it would have been uh, like really great to see. A re like, again, why were we in such a hurry? To, we got a good episode with the Morgan poop. But why, why were they in such a hurry to swap? I have no idea. I don't know, Rob. I just don't know. Okay. Um, but even after that, I'm like, all right, well, we got the Chris Noble vote. I'm like, uh, the season's gonna go downhill from there. But yeah, I just felt like that there was uh stuff going on. I mean, it was it just me, or were there some really good reward challenges uh in the season? And I'm not a big reward challenge guy, but I felt like that a lot of the uh the reward challenges, like especially the team ones, were uh like really like uh, neck and neck. Oh, you're saying like actually watching the challenges yeah. themselves. I thought you were talking about the rewards. I was like, no, yeah, I think the they just got like coffee and some water and stuff. Like, yeah. you know, they got pastries the one time. Yeah, yeah, you know. Like, I feel like that, you know, we end up with in after the post merge, uh, like we have like sort of like our big like set pieces, like action or like it's all in the reward challenge. And then every single immunity challenge is like, all right, let's see who can stand here the mm -hmm. longest uh, with this thing on your head. Uh, whereas yeah. like we had some really good reward challenges with like doing stuff with like, uh, the slingshots and going back, you know, go, going back and forth and like the, the, the spool coming down. Like, I feel like that there were some, like, uh, really a lot, a lot of reward challenges, uh, with action in, uh, this, uh, back half of the season, but, uh, gross food challenge is back, Phil. Uh, we did, right. I think, is this the last time we've seen the gross food challenge on survivor? Ah, uh, I believe I, so. I don't think it's, yeah, I don't think it's unless it's in David versus Goliath, and I don't think it is. Uh, yeah, no I don't loot think for them. No, yeah. no, no. We would have we would have known of like Christian like having a reaction to like some sort of. Mm -hmm. food <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, th uh, we got the gross food challenge, and uh, we got to see where uh, Angela she's gonna really like have her big moment. She just comes alive. Right, and Jurger is fighting for his life at this yeah. point, and He's it comes to down to the two of them. Yeah. yeah, right. And like, I feel like if Jurger is against anybody else here, but Angela, the, just 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 demolishing these these disgusting foods. Like, I feel like he has a good shot to stay in the game a little bit longer. But uh, you know, Angela just uh, yeah, 
she's really out here. With, yeah, at least you got you got this. They're gonna play the votes on uh, Michael, and then he plays his idol, and then uh, Libby goes home on the uh, on the vote split. Ah, devil in an angel's body. Yeah. Right. Even this, I thought this right. was interesting where Laurel is sort of like playing like the double agent and Dominic is too, but it's really more Laurel that has to like sell this of like, Hey, we're here on the bottom of Malolo and we're trying to get in. And this, we can't crack Navidi. Like, meanwhile, like she got a final four deal with Dom and Wendell. At tribal, she plays that up and not just in this tribal, yeah. but throughout as well. Like, we're just trying to make our way in, just blah, 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 which is such a subtle thing, but it's really, really works for her. Yeah, which really sets up where we get to that uh, Desiree, like, has this plan to take out Kellen. Now, one of the things I thought that was interesting, uh, Dominic says that he has a dream where uh, Martin Sheen was making breakfast. Uh, Leon, did you catch that? Mm -hmm. yeah 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 i remember um what else and it was like what else happened to them in that dream it was such a wild thing it, and they were all trying to do so oh, oh my gosh i wish i could did i write it down i gotta find it somewhere in my notes here. let me see perhaps uh do, do i do i have a, a, a clip oh yes here i have a clip called dominic's dream on my uh, hard drive let's see so remind me to tell you this dream i had it was me and you having breakfast in your kitchen, and Martin Sheen was your father. Martin Sheen is Laurel's dad. <laughs> what do you think, Phil? Uh the the Mighty Duck man. Wait, no, that's Emilio. No, that's that's, that's uh, Emilio Estevez's dad. <laughs> Dominic's a big West Wing guy, so right. he's yeah. Um, that's not a joke. That he's a, he loves the West Wing, so maybe that he just has President Bartlett on the brain. <laughs> while playing survivor <laughs> mm -hmm. i don't know yeah. how that came across but i don't know the 23 and me test might say otherwise mm -hmm. okay so yeah this is uh and we, and we talked about this episode a little bit where uh it's gonna be desiree's big move uh and kellen comes back and really this is the the apex of kellen's game where she comes back and then laurel told dominic what's going on and then Dominic tries to tell Kellen, and Kellen is so mad. Yeah. He's lying. This didn't. This, Desiree's that if Desiree's lying to me, then why is Chelsea with me all day? Mm -hmm. No way. They wouldn't do yeah. that to her. They wouldn't do mm -hmm. that to her, Rob. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No way. Yeah. The, this whole thing just spirals from, oh, okay, yeah, Desiree's got a point. I could definitely see this. And then it's just a, a he said, she said all over the place, who's telling who? Because I'm trying to even keep it all straight. And I like watched this literally yesterday because uh, it's Laurel, right? That like initially tells Kellen or tells Do Dominic, told, right? Told Dominic, Dominic, and Dominic told and then Kellen. Dom tells Kellen, and then Kellen goes to Desiree, and then is well, like, goes to Desiree is like, can you believe that Dominic told me that you're trying to flip on me? Uh, and Desiree's like, <laughs> oh, that's, that's crazy. crazy. Like, oh, that's crazy. crazy. Yeah. I never did that. No. I would never. Yeah. And but she like she sticks to her guns when it comes to the lie because. Right. In camp, there's the full out confrontation when Laurel and it, maybe it was a tribal council or both, but, but no, you said, you said, and then there's other, but the Malolos are all trying to back her up, and somehow Desiree just gets completely yeah. thrown under the bus. Okay. Uh, I've been a staunch Laurel defender. Uh, should Laurel have said anything about this plan? Like, uh, if, if Desiree wanted to knock out Kellen, uh, is that the kind of thing with, I, I mean, I guess that, that it's hard to say because we know how things ultimately are going to go. Uh, would that have been in Laurel's interest at all to have, uh, Desiree and the company rise up against Kellen? I mean, Kellen's not one of her final four, so I don't know. Does it start to throw apart the Navidi strong and Laurel knows like, oh, I need to keep this together? Possibly uh, that's the logic behind it. Yeah, that's sort of like, uh, Phil, like when I'm playing pool and like just all the balls are everywhere and just like, uh, that's one of those things, just like uh, shoot the cue ball into just the, the, the pile and see what happens. Right. Just because like, you know, at that point, like you kind of just have to, scatter like i mean yeah like you like you're saying like we know what happened so obviously like maybe we want to see the different route perhaps but uh you know i mean maybe i guess maybe it makes yeah. it more interesting in yeah. terms of just like not seeing when and dom 
uh, steamroll through the rest yeah, of the game. Kellen and Laurel don't really have a bad relationship uh, yet at this point in the game. Like they just sort of have like kind of like no relationship, uh, mm. but they sort yeah. of like get them on on the wrong foot. Um, it's kind of like but, a mutual. They have like a mutual friend, like they're mutual yeah. friends, right? Because they have mm. both have Dominic and Wendell kind of in the middle there, and so it's in their best interest to keep them sort of all together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Donathan's also going to find Ty's idol, the <laughs> iconic Phil. Do you remember where you were when, uh, oh, when yeah. found Ty's uh, idol? Oh, uh, uh, I was probably, um, in bed. Wait, <laughs> yesterday watching this, uh, when Dominic found Ty's idol or wait, mm -hmm. are you talking about when Ty? Okay. When I Ty didn't play Ty the said, idol. Ty, yeah, was, when, 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 oh. when Ty said Scott Pollard, no, no, that's what I yeah. no, no, no. Both, 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 both iconic moments in Survivor. Both <laughs> iconic moments. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Ty, yeah, and Ty's idol. Very uh, iconic idol, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. But like, whose bad decision was it? Was it Ty's bad decision? Because he didn't, because he could have used Scott later in the game? I don't know. Because Ty, he made it to the right. final three right so what whose bad decision was it i think Scott? they're reaching at this point right yeah. this is this is where well, we're it was reaching. ty's idol <laughs> I yeah know. i think they're really hard gonna be in two halves uh like but you had it from last season like i don't know if it was like oh but but uh donathan won't know it's like lauren rimmer had uh, two parts of an idol doctor <laughs> she gave one half to dr mike dr mike threw it in the fire like donathan is gonna read the note like who's dr mike <laughs> Right, exactly. <laughs> oh man, it, it was right there. It was right there, right there, everybody. Anyway, yeah. but uh, just pretend you act like you know who Dr. Mike is. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure like they're not all super fans, right? I'm sure some of them got their advantage from Ghost Island and said, Ah, yes, uh -huh. mm -hmm. I know this person. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You're telling me Chris Noble knew who JT was? Oh, biggest JT fan. <laughs> Big token chains guy. Big Steven was yeah. robbed. Yeah. Uh, Chris Noble has been pounding that drum for years. Um, so <laughs> Chelsea, Chelsea is going to win an immunity uh, at 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 this point in in the game. And um, is there a, a survivor in the 30s? Uh, like we talked about Purple Kelly recently. Has anybody been more invisible than Chelsea? Could you tell? She cried when she got coffee. Mm -hmm. Could you name one other fact about Chelsea? We've watched the season twice, uh, done weekly podcasts uh, of it when it aired, Liana and I. Yeah. Phil has written many songs about the season. Right. She wanted seasoning on her on her meat or something from one of the rewards, and she she asked uh, if she could put the season. Oh, the season. Wait, is that wrong or is that? No, I mean, she was there. I think she was there when they made the steaks. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, I, you know, uh, there's so many. I so can't many even moments. remember her loved even... one. Was it a sister? Wait, she was there. Oh, was no. She was, uh, she was at the family. She was, she right? Was her dad? Oh, boy. Hmm. I think this uh, shows, like, because at least I can name some facts about the others, I suppose. Uh, yeah. Maybe. I mean, I remember her first words were, I'm sitting. Mm hmm. But I feel like she makes Purple Kelly seem like that. Oh, like uh, Purple Kelly was basically just uh, like uh, Tony Vlachos. Not not strategy wise, but just like in terms of like being Content. like visibility. Oh, visibility. <laughs> visibility. Right, right, right. visibility. Well, I remember I tried to pay attention at least early on to her confessionals to say, OK, you know, like was there gold here? They were also not the most eye catching, eye popping confessionals. And then I just sort of fell off trying to pay attention to yeah. those. So, no, I have no facts. Yeah. And they, you know, have done like better jobs uh, casting in the like later seasons for the most part. But uh, I just like I don't even know what they were going for here. Like, what was the thing about Chelsea that the the casting people were like, yeah, I don't her. know. I, I can not tell you what her job is. She was an EMT slash pro cheerleader. You think that's oh. why the pro cheerleading? Yeah, Salt Lake City, yeah. Yes, yeah, so Leon, I, and I think you what also did her interview with me, right? Oh, it was, yeah. it was at Libby. <laughs> no, that was. I think I'm pretty sure that was me. I think I was Chelsea. <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh, I, I, knew, I knew it was you. I wasn't sure. She was, she was yeah. angry. I'm pretty sure. 
It was her. Yes, it that just definitely adds happened. to the whole mystique of Chelsea. Oh my god! Like not yeah. only did she, I don't, think was, I, I don't think it was that she was angry. I think she was like had something else going on. Yeah, I think I, yeah, it definitely. She definitely had something else going on, and that's why she couldn't make it. It was a scheduling conflict because it was very last minute when when we put the whole thing together. So <laughs> yeah, okay. Then uh, so ultimately here uh desiree uh goes out and you know i feel bad for desiree ever i felt like she got kind of piled on at the tribal council here yeah i think that like just the way when you get caught in a lie like that it's kind of hard to come back from ever getting any like especially for the malolo people who are just trying to survive at this point yeah. Like they're like, yeah, whatever. Like, uh, you you dug your you dug your grave. Like, I I have to I have to pile on, or else it's gonna be me. So it's like, yeah. <laughs> right, right. Uh, and Desiree, you know, uh, bless her heart, she was like, uh, look, I I don't like saying things multiple times. I'm gonna say this one one time. <laughs> like this didn't happen. <laughs> La the Laurel, end. Laurel is a damn liar. <laughs> no further questions, Your Honor. Yeah, yeah. that's my time. Yeah. <laughs> okay uh and and then after that though that, that like it's kind of like the the die is cast here and this is sort of like the like dom and wendell like uh are able to sort of like uh really get that stranglehold at this point where we split into the two groups and this was very exciting that it happened but ultimately like uh yeah kellen just gets uh duped here by you know that wendell is telling her that uh or, or michael yerger comes to her and says hey i have an idol uh like dom's like no way he doesn't have an idol and kellen's like no you, he, he does i can tell i need to vote for laurel mm -hmm. i need to play my, i have two votes uh like if kellen had that other that like imagine she had that when she got to the final seven uh that too like that could have been really like a thing that changed the game uh but she wasted here nobody even knew she had it mm -hmm. and she didn't need it also yeah. i completely forgot that there was a split tribal <laughs> council right. during the season so this is fun to relive yeah. Yeah, I mean, this was a big moment, and they they even reference it, I think, in uh, Island of the Idols that they mm -hmm. talked about, like uh, that th this was uh, they did this, the same exact thing when they br when they split up at like ten or eleven in uh, in, in that season, and you know it was a, it, it was it's an interesting thing to do in terms of like the the, the randomness. You just happen to have like all these power players on the one side, and uh, mm -hmm. like Kellen just gets spun around here back and forth. And uh, she's so worried about Michael Yerger that ultimately it ends up with uh, like and, and Dom and Wendell are voting for Michael Yerger, but they get Laurel and Kellen firing at each other and Michael Yerger out of the game and Kellen playing her advantage. Uh, it's really like game over after that. Yeah. Yeah. Really masterful stuff. One, two, three, yep. four, five punch of uh, one thing after another going right for them. That's wild. I, I mean, it completely fractures the any trust between Laurel and Kellen. Yeah. So yeah. that's dead. They don't even have to worry about that really moving forward. And this was a Wendell move. Like Wendell mm -hmm. was the one that really got like a like you know he's like I got to protect Laurel, and then he gets he gets Laurel voting for Kellen, and and uh, Kellen you know uh, like firing at, at laurel and ultimately uh then once it gets like, comes out that Kel oh kellen you also had two votes and didn't tell us about it and you put your two votes on laurel of all people we we're trying to get michael yerger out and you wasted your votes on laurel <laughs> yeah, I that. Uh, 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 yeah um to trust so, her gut let me ask you about the other side of things uh donathan promises jenna that he will play his idol for her <laughs> and then does not why i don't know no, no. Uh, why he never yeah uh yeah. not not a good thing to like you know over promise you never want to over promise something uh, uh you know yeah yeah and then liana that also michael yerger asked uh, donathan can i borrow your idol and show it to people and say it's my idol and donathan's like no I he doesn't want it coming back to him, even though he already promised Jenna that he would play it for him. And like 
uh, you know, at least all of the Malolos know about it. So why not? Why not, Donathan? Sure. I, but this is where I'm saying Malolo was already gone. Malolo's done. It's done. It was done. It was done mm -hmm. way back when. And there's no way the Malolos are sticking together. They're all out for themselves. So, of course, Donathan is not going to be willing to give up the idol, even if it's just a prop. Because Michael, I mean, now, Michael, the 18 year old, would he have actually straight up played it for himself, which I would have loved? Or would he have to have given it back before tribal council? That I don't know. No, but no way no way that was gonna happen mm -hmm. yeah so ultimately uh what is what does jonathan do with with his idol does he, he plays it on himself he plays it on himself at that tribal yeah but, uh, it was, so he just wait he just like he, wasted. Yeah, he just wasted yeah, it anyway. no yeah. one voted for it oh, wow. voted for him Oh no, so no, one person, one person. No, no, no. Oh, no, I don't want people to like know about my idol. <laughs> like, yeah, like you can't show it to people. I need to waste it on <laughs> the, not the tribe. No, I think he was convinced that people were voting for him because Jenna does vote for him. And so when that first vote comes up, Donathan does not count. He's like, Yeah. And he's looking at the jury. He's like, Yeah, like look at me. I just played an idol successfully. And then it's, you know, Jenna, 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 Jenna. Yeah. Phil, how did Donathan hold up for you? Uh, oh, wow. Chaos Donathan. We love Donathan. Okay, so I admittedly will say I watched a couple eps on 1.5. It was difficult to understand what Donathan was saying, but, yeah. uh, you know. Um, absolute gem. Like, this is the kind of, like... They uh, love Donathan. Yeah, it's... I mean, who, you know, who... You know, Sia loves Sia Donathan. Loves Don Sia, Sia loves Sia Donathan. Sia loves Donathan, yep. Uh, like... You know, he's just like the the kind of character that is just like oozing uh, charm. You know, just of like, you know, uh, I don't know. You know, and then not only is like, and I think this this is like a, a, a result of like the theme of Ghost Island is like paranoia is striking everybody, and especially it's striking Donathan. Donathan is just like, are you voting for me? And there's like for no he reason. He loses it by the end. Yeah, like, what, like he's just like so like on his toes about er like on everyone. Like Laurel, who he's like been playing the whole game with. Do like like Wendell and Donathan need to like coddle him, and it's and it's not working at all. Like he's just yeah. so paranoid. Uh, but it's it's an incredible. Get watch. that off at the end of the game, Leona. Like there's no like bringing him back. It's no. too late. Uh, it, you know, that train has left the station and he's just, I mean, all the things of like, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'd vote for you. Oh, I wouldn't vote for you. Just uh, all, all over the place. And then he doesn't have an idol. And I would have loved to have seen what he may have done without Laurel, because I do feel at least in the early stages, Laurel was saying, no, 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 we can't do anything. Let's stay calm. Let's stay calm. But Donathan unleashed maybe is what we would have seen without her there holding him back. Yeah. Right, because honestly, like he, like he wants to make moves against Wendell and Donathan, and like ultimately, I think Laurel like reigns him in a bit, and and then just all of a sudden, he's just like, screw Laurel, screw it, Laurel, I'm just like gonna <laughs> do my you. own thing, and like whatever happens, happens, it's fine, like, mm -hmm. and I love it. Yeah, I do think that this double tribal kind of screws them because they ultimately end up losing like the the 10 and the 9 vote. Uh, and then all, all of a sudden we went from like there were 10 players to now there's eight at the family visit here that's coming up in the next episode. So uh, like if you're waiting to make a move on Dominic and Wendell, you sort of like lost a window there where we had the two sides where you couldn't take a shot at them when you ended up in a tribe where even if they would have gotten like split up, like we saw, like with uh, some people in uh, like uh, like Island of the Idols, where um, you know, uh, like Missy and Aaron go to different uh, like uh, sides, where then they both get picked off in that double tribal council. Uh, like had Dominic and gone to one group of five, and Wendell gone to the other group of five, like maybe that's the spot where people could say, like, take a shot at one of them, mm -hmm. or at but least they have to play their idols. You know, it's like, uh, but they ended up in a situation where they got to be together. On one side, Dominic, uh, I've had individual immunity, and then also Kellen burn her advantage, uh, you know, to try to vote out Laurel in that round. Um, we get to the final eight, and uh, a, a, a all time great loved ones visit, also. A great Daddy! loved ones. Visit. Yes. Daddy! 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 Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. You, have, you have original oh. Wendell, you have Aunt yep. Patty, mm -hmm. you have uh, Dominic's wife, mm -hmm. Chris, coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, she says, I love you. I hate you. Nobody's ever said I hate you to their loved one when they come out. Amazing. You have Wendell also give up being able to be Ooh. with his, his dad because he wants to go Wendell. to 
to go silence to get the the Malcolm advantage. Yeah, which stunk when it was for Malcolm. Like, yeah, uh, and like, it stunk again. <laughs> It was such a flop. It was such yeah. a flop. And the whole thing about setting up, oh, you're going to give up love to go get this thing, this advantage in the next immunity. And and the fact that then when the immunity challenge happened and Wendell, oh, Wendell dropped it. Oh, Wendell dropped it again. Just right back to back. Yeah. Boring. I mean, you, once you're not going to win that challenge, you're not going to win that challenge. Like, stop exactly. giving him more chances. You could have yeah. given Wendell three more chances. Like, uh, like you're not going to win. When, when, when you're done, you're done. That's it. It's not the kind of thing that you get after a while. Like, you know, like a second chance is going to do anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But th the women are so mad after this happens where it's like, you know, like there could have been a women's thing earlier in the season, but like there's too much bad blood between Kellen and Laurel at, at this point for it to happen. But the fact that they also like, didn't even give the women a chance to say, uh, Hey, do, uh, do any of you women want a chance to go to ghost Island or should one of us take it? Wendell jumps on that. It's even like, they didn't even let us get the advantage and then they get to go on the family visit and that's it. Incensed. Incensed. Yeah. It's time no, for the is, uprising. This yes. was it. Yep. So I've watched nine seasons of Survivor uh, <laughs> so far this year. And then my biggest takeaway is people that don't go on the loved ones visit are pissed. Yeah. They get it really hurts. Yeah. Yeah. People loved the Rob. I was going to say people love their loved one. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when. The <laughs> yeah. So, so you know, when you miss that opportunity, it's like, yeah, it's kind of feels like a slap in the face, especially if Wendell is literally chosen you know mm -hmm. i feel like i feel some type of way as well like you know like mm -hmm. yo like uh i'm out here starving you know uh you know getting psychologically beaten down and i just want one person i can talk to that i can trust implicitly and you know you're gonna throw all that away to you know i mean he didn't know he was gonna get a dumb advantage but uh mm -hmm. but it hurts it. No one else gets the slot either. He just straight up yeah. gives it up. I don't know if they yeah. have enough sandwiches. But. I, I, I think I feel some type of way. I don't know. I'm sensitive though. So, <laughs> Leon, did Dominic promise to Aunt Patty they're taking Dominic to the end? Uh, it's. I, I'm trying to remember the language that he used. It was like us. We're together. We're going to the end mm -hmm. together. I think it's that type of vague language that allows him to get away with it. Oh, the end. What does the end <sighs> mean? Uh, you know, it's what? open did, to interpretation. So did 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 Aunt Patty ever follow through and uh, beat Dominic's ass? Is that, <laughs> do, we, do we know? I mean, uh, I've I have not heard from Dominic that Aunt Patty kicked his ass at any oh, point. Okay. Yeah. Well, maybe maybe he's avoiding her. Oh, we need yeah. a talking with T-Bird to really sort that yeah. one out. Find it by Aunt Patty. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, she's a Brand Steel superstar, Aunt Patty. <laughs> Memorable right. Brand Steel right. debut. Uh, and, and so ultimately, like, uh, that they realize they need to uh, try to vote out Chelsea here in uh, in this spot. That's what it, that's what's coming uh, for. Uh, challenge here. beast. There we know another thing about right. Chelsea. 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 Beast. The challenge beast. Chelsea. Yeah, I yeah. think she did win two beast. immunities uh, in the season. So congratulations there. Um, but this was where uh, yeah Dominic won uh, individual immunity, his second in a row, mm -hmm. uh, and they ended up going for Chelsea. And, and as Liana pointed out earlier in the show, you know this was probably the spot if Laurel was going to make a flip. Mm -hmm. It really was. Yeah. Yeah. Uh so that uh it's a five three vote against uh Chelsea in this spot. And then the three votes are for are for Wendell, and they come from it's uh Kellen, it is Chelsea, uh Oh, they, they even get Angela and, and Angela, yeah, because it's those three. I mean, again, Angela is just Wherever Such the wind blows, yeah. <laughs> that's where she's going to go here. Okay, great. Because I remember, like, you know, the whole narrative is that Donathan and Laurel are in the middle and they're going to be the kingmakers in this episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know people get on uh, Laurel, but you know, Donathan's also uh, voting out Chelsea here in this spot. And, you know, they did go on the family visit with Dominic, uh, mm -hmm. promised to Aunt Patty that uh, they're going go to go to the end. So, yeah, we'll see. But that's 
pro probably the the best spot uh wendell has his uh hidden idol where uh, he has eric's necklace still where he could potentially play it if he feels like anything is uh gonna go south there but uh then we get the final seven one more regular episode before the finale and now kellen is uh pretty much dead in the water uh she's trying to get something going uh but this is where donathan gets set off phil yeah and uh you know uh this is just like premium donathan content where he's just like out here uh you know just saying to people's faces that he, he doesn't trust them and just like doing absolutely wild things that uh yeah. donathan unleashed yeah. yeah he was unleashed um well First, we're going to have the reward challenge here where uh, Dominic and Wendell are going to go on the reward with Laurel. And then, Liana, this is like one of the situations where you have like sort of like the, one of these late game reward situations where the final three goes on a reward and basically like it's locked in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is the one where they're giving the pool noodles to all the children and all of those types of yeah, things. I think this is the only time in the Fiji era where they go and visit like a school and like mm -hmm. uh, give, give stuff out to people. So, uh, yeah, that happens and, and they have a great day. But then when they come back, yeah, this is where Donathan is just like uh, getting uh, very, very upset. And even Wendell is losing his patience uh, with Donathan. <laughs> Because isn't this where they're laying on the bed together, yeah. right? And and Donathan or Wendell, Wendell's like, or yeah, what was even Donathan doing there? He was just trying to what freak Wendell out and be like, I would vote for Dominic if he were in the end. So mm, mm, yeah, mm. yeah when, Wendell's like, why? Well, why are you saying this to me? Why are you being? Why are you being like this, why Donathan? Like this? <laughs> just like intentionally, like trying to push his buttons, like for no, like no strategic merit at all you know just to like just to like uh you know push his buttons be a little troll yeah why i don't know but i, I loved am. it i don't I know mean, if, if, if i understood the logic correctly it was you have to go after dominic because i will vote for him yeah so you can't right. be sitting next to him so you must hmm. go after him i believe that 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 was at least the logic now the approach questionable yeah. best do you think it was that he was mad was it was it dominic and wendell working together that took laurel on the uh, on the reward yes when the three of them were together mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and so that was a little bit like oh okay i see where i fall because it was the group of four of them yeah. right and yeah. he was like yeah. oh okay so clearly i'm the fourth here yeah yeah okay but so yeah yeah, and then before tribal council, like Wendell's like, quick, I need to make a fake idol. Give me, uh, what do you, what do you have for me? Got any notes? And he's like, all right, hold on, go on, let me see, let me check the storeroom. Uh, I'll see what I got for you. And and then and then uh, Donathan's like, uh, wait, what are you doing over there? He's like, uh, Donathan, I just had to give him a thing. It's nothing. Like, I, yeah, nothing. It's not it's just a thing. Nothing. It's just a thing. You'll not find out later. Either. It's not important. <laughs> I, I was like, watching this like is, is was this like a retaliation troll attempt by Dom and Wendell to be like, like why don't they just tell them what like I mean I guess yeah whatever but like just tell them something instead of like being ambiguous about it like it was a lot of like giving him a taste of his own medicine kind of of like okay you're gonna be weird about like about something with me then uh, uh i yeah. guess i'll do it back to you and then dominic later has shades of the fake idol thing all over again where he's like i don't know i was just handing a uh, wendell a bracelet that wendell was asking me for i have no idea what jonathan's <laughs> all out about yeah, it's up to him if he yeah. wants to disclose what it is but it's yeah, the, you know. the dominic donathan relationship is going to be a big uh deal ultimately when we get to the finale and the final six kellen ends up going out here but you know the thing like kellen got to at least like the difference between kellen and laurel where i think i really feel like that kellen had more chances to change the ultimate outcome of the season but i don't think that she's judged as hard as harshly as laurel is because at least kellen got to like go out like uh like dom and wendell you sons of guns mm -hmm. like i should like uh i should have got you like she has like a real like an episode where she's able to like throw everything against the wall and try to go out where laurel doesn't get that mm -hmm. she doesn't ultimately get to have right. like in the final three like uh like, like uh you know, that's it fun. yeah mm -hmm. so, and i mean but, Cal, Cal, oh yeah go, go ahead phil oh no, no, it's just like that she's also in confession like constantly telling us like they need to go i think that's also like a huge part of it of like maybe yeah. if like kellen had more episodes where she has basically like troy zan mode of like this is my right. island yeah yes right 
Yeah, it's those confessionals because Kellen's confessionals, I remember at the time also being a little frustrating because, oh, uh, trust your gut, trust your gut, trust your gut, which by the way, she's not the only person. There's a trust your gut is the one of the themes of Ghost Island. Desiree says it, Michael says it, Wendell says it, Donathan says it. Everybody says trust your gut. It just so happens that Kellen is the one that we really get shoved down our throats. And I think maybe because she at least had a plan and stuck with her plan, whereas to Phil's point about Laura being like oh well maybe I will maybe I won't I don't know then that maybe makes people frustrated but yeah Kellen definitely had more agency and I think if she had made a move earlier she could have actually taken the pieces and gone mm -hmm. with it whereas Laurel really didn't have that many options yeah the finale we get uh, a really electric uh final six vote also in this season again there were a, a lot of interesting uh votes the, the last one before the final travel council is going to be the final six uh then the final five and the final four in this finale are pretty ho-hum mm -hmm. uh but a lot got talked about after the game was over of like basically like uh dominic and wendell are going to come into this uh final travel council with loaded pockets as uh donathan would say where we're going to see, uh, I believe w Wendell has the immunity necklace at the final, at the final six. Dominic has an immunity, a real immunity idol and the David Wright fake immunity idol here. But Sebastian has two votes. And so there's a plan where Seabass is trying to get uh, Laurel and Donathan and Angela, I guess, to vote out Dominic here. Uh, at this point where he has the two votes. And for some reason, Angela tells Dominic that Sebastian <laughs> has the extra vote, Phil. This was absolutely wild. Like, and like, he didn't even have to pry it out of her. He just walked up to her and she was like, oh, well, yeah, I'm going to feel bad if I don't tell you this. So, uh, yeah, like this is, this is what's happening. Uh, and I was like, why? I don't understand. It's just, I don't know, it's frustrating. Uh, yeah. yeah. That, uh, was that a move or was that just, I have a secret and I, I have to tell somebody? I think, I think yeah. she just, he, he did not pry at all. Like she, he, she was just like, well, I think this thing I'm just happened gonna tell you. Yeah, today. this happened. So, like, yeah, it was like, oh, I know something. It's like, you know, this oh, is just, I should just what tell happens. You. Yeah, like this is what happens around camp. Like we get, we find something out, we tell Dom and Wendell. Like that's just yeah. what happens. Like, because, Dominic is ultimately not going to even play his idol. Like if, if Laurel and Angela voted for Dominic here at the final six, uh, he, he would have gone home. Oh my gosh. I remember that. I, and, and then in the rewatch too, it was exactly the same level of excitement of like, Oh my God, he should play it. He needs to play it. And even knowing that he goes on and it's totally fine. It's just like, how do you not yeah. play it here? I don't know. Maybe that means that he's a better player than I would. I would completely panic and 100% play the idol. So I don't remember if uh, I uh, talked about this when the episode actually happened. I went to the finale. I don't know what I did podcast wise after, but I, I actually, uh, this bothered me on the rewatch here. So at this final six travel council and a lot got talked about that mm. Dominic was, came on too strong on Donathan that, that people talked about this uh, in a lot of the post game interviews where Do Dominic and to a lesser degree, Wendell really just browbeat donathan here at this tribal council but jeff has the fake or or Do, or dominic has the fake david wright immunity idol and he's like jeff i got this idol i'm gonna i want you to i'm 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 i'm, I'm gonna i'm giving it to you um and and jeff does not say um, okay dominic is playing the idol this is not an idol jeff just holds it until after the votes and you shouldn't be able to do that no. right it's it, in the same way that if Wendell had to call Jeff, like, come over, check right, my right, puzzle. Right, right. If you're going to yeah. give it to Jeff, like, you better be ready for the consequences of Jeff to say yes or no. Yes. Yeah. Doesn't um, make sense. If this was Big Brother, like, uh, you are not allowed to use production uh, for for your game. Mm -hmm. Um I, again, I, I don't know if we if we talked about it at the time, but I'm like, was Jeff in on it? Was it like, hey, Jeff, just so you know, at Tribal Council, I'm going to hand you the fake uh, immunity. Don't say it's fake yet. <laughs> like, hold the fake, yeah. uh, fake idol. And then, like, it's one thing if well, if Dominic holds it and says, I've got my idol. I got my idol right. tonight. In season 35, I talked about this last week. Ben plays an idol before the vote. Uh, Jeff says, I can confirm this is the idol. Ben, you can't vote for Ben tonight. 
Uh, and Dominic yeah. does the same thing before the vote. So the idea is, hey, Dominic just gave Jeff his idol. Jeff didn't say it's fake. I guess we shouldn't vote for Dominic tonight. Right. Like maybe it's to be assumed that since he didn't confirm it, like, you know, there's like something going on there. Like, and, and Dominic is a poker player, Rob. All right. Yeah. So like, you know, he's going to take a big risk like this. Maybe he didn't even con like consider, or well, maybe he did consider that Jeff could, you know, validate it right in front of them. But he's like, maybe that's a risk he was willing to take at the time. Cause yeah, he's a he poker player, baby. So he gets, he gets up after the votes are cast and says, Look, everybody, I got to tell you something that this is actually not a real idol. I, if, I, if I lose tonight, this was a million dollar mistake. So <laughs> he doesn't reveal. He doesn't even let Jeff have the moment. Uh, I think that's still a fun tribal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, super great TV. I just I don't think that was fair. That they, they You shouldn't be allowed yeah. to do that. Right. Um, I agree. Okay. Yes. And then Sebastian ultimately goes home at the final six. Uh, but Liana, you mentioned again about the 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 Wendell puzzle thing. It's it's a great moment. I'm glad they left it in the show about when Wendell does his puzzle and then just sort of like stands it's back. Like, and then Laurel is like, Jeff, I got it. It's like Laurel wins immunity. Uh, and it, it was an interesting call. And Jeff's like, look, Wendell, you got like you have to tell me, you have to call it. And it's great foreshadowing. <laughs> Because then I think that happens at the final seven. And then at the final six, Wendell finishes his puzzle and is like, Jeff Probst. And he's like, yeah. uh, <laughs> yeah, full he names him. Jeffrey yeah. Lee yeah, Probst yeah. over here. Like, I Mr. Jeff Lee puzzle. This. <laughs> <laughs> love that. Yeah. It's great. I love, I love that. And I like I we're it. learning more about the rules, even though apparently the rules are maybe a little bit inconsistent. But now, now we know. And, and Jeff was so when, when incensed when the whole thing happens. It's just like, well, you know, you have to call me over when you're done with the puzzle. <laughs> Jeff, he's like on the other side of that thing. Like it's not yeah. like that. He, you know, uh, watching everybody. It's not like that they were they were right there. Um, so yeah, you got to call uh, Jeff. Sedge. I'm glad they left that in there. That's like the kind of thing they could have just left that on the cutting room mm -hmm. floor. But uh, that was an interesting moment. Um, Anyway, uh, yeah, yada yada. Donathan, Donathan goes out. <laughs> and she, yeah. I mean, there was a, the, like there's like a you know 45 minutes of boring in the finale. Uh, yeah. But the final four fire making is back, and Dominic has to make a choice, and and we get the urns uh, to come back. Phil, did you like with Dominic getting to pick which <laughs> urn? Oh yes, like, so like a uh, very very strategic decision. I guess it was like a good history lesson. We got to see Tony and Wu again. It's it's kind of fun. No, I mean, no, we, we, like the, the reunion show was like 10 minutes at this point. We only have so much time in the finale. Why are we yeah. wasting like 12, 50, like a 10 minute segment on well, like Dominic climbing up a mountain, picking an urn. No, but it did set up this narrative of ultimately like where the, the, the theme of the season is one bad decision can haunt you forever. And mm. in a lot of ways, I feel like that's sort of like Dom's fate of survivor where that people talk about, that Dominic's one bad decision was that he should have gone into the fire making against Wendell, where he could have uh, faced off against Wendell, where ultimately he was going to lose to him. Liana, uh, is that how you feel? Is that is that ultimately uh, Dom's uh, one bad decision? Well, at first I thought you were going to say the bad decision was he chose the wrong urn. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you Should pick game, game changers, changers here. Yeah, yeah, we all know because like Brad Culpep, well, anyway, whatever. Like Brad <laughs> Culpep made the wrong move because he didn't vote out Sarah Lucina when he, I don't know. what, And like somehow Troy Zan is just uh, exempt from all of this. But fine, whatever. I, I <laughs> love I love this conversation because it, you know. Oh, should he have thrown himself into the final fire making, which then we see in two seasons later, the ramifications of if you do throw yourself in, I mean, it definitely would have eliminated one of the dogs. So then you kind of know who the other one is going to be. I, ultimately, I'm yeah. happy that he didn't do it because we get yeah. the tie. We don't need to get right. the tie. We need exactly. The tie. Yeah, and Phil, I, and I know that that Dom, uh, like, blames himself of like I should have made the fire against uh Wendell. I could have beat him. I could have beat him in the fire making. But I just feel like I, I've never felt like that. Uh, like you have a you know, uh, like a, even if it's a coin flip of mm -hmm. you know winning in the, winning, like maybe Wendell's gonna lose. Uh, right. like, he probably won't lose against Angela. But I'd rather like get to the end. Right. As a poker player, he should know, like, I think he probably did like the calculations of like, Hey, like, uh, if I, 
if I do go and I beat Wendell at fire, it's like a hundred percent odds to win, but like, it's not a sure thing that he, like, there's so many factors. Like, you know, you could have a, you could have a bad day. You could have bad twigs or I don't know, whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you know, like, it's not a sure <laughs> thing. like you can be confident that you think you can beat Wendell in a fire. It's not a sure thing. You have a sure thing. That is such a hard thing to walk away from. Uh, like, I, he, he definitely should not blame himself, especially like since it was really close. It was really close. I mean, that's the thing is he was one vote away from winning also, right? So if one person had changed their mind, I think that that's, uh, I mean, he must have felt at least somewhat confident about the decision. And yeah, like Phil's point of, well, it's not guaranteed you're going to get rid of him. Yeah, then you have an easy path after that. But are you willing to, to put that at risk, especially when you want immunity? Because I mean... The, Dominic himself goes to Ghost Island if he gives up immunity, throws himself in the fire making challenge, and loses. Like Dominic will be maturing on Ghost Island because that is going to be, you know, oh, what a terrible move he made, what a bad right. mistake, and and so I can understand from that perspective the conservative gameplay, conservative gameplay. If they're yeah. big stakes, it's big, 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 yeah. big, big stakes. Mm -hmm. Like big, mm, stakes. Yeah. And again, they haven't seen it play out. They know they right. knew about it, unlike uh, in season 35. But, you know, I just feel like that based on what, you know, Dominic knew at that point, you know, I've, I've never given him uh, a hard time about that. He should have made the made the fire. Uh, ultimately, we get we, we get to the tie. Uh, in some ways, I feel like that uh, Dominic was lucky to get to the tie. Like, I feel like he got Chris Noble's vote, which like, what were the chances of that? Well, it's right in his name, Rob. He's a noble guy. And, you know, when he respects yeah. another man, He's the noble uh, you know, man. he deserves my vote, brother. Uh, yeah. That's mutual way, respect there. Yeah. Yeah. We uh, did not talk about Wendell's confessional yet to oh. vote out Chris Noble at that trial. Because also, Chris Noble went home with an idol in his pocket somehow. That, oh, uh, my God. Oh, my God. So aggravating. Yeah, you're, I, I don't li know how you're literally yeah. Dominic is in the voting confessional shouting your name like you're yeah. getting votes. Yeah, yeah I know. Like that's what I was gonna say. That Wendell's <laughs> voting confessional is so great, but people forget about that. Dominic is like Chris, Chris Noble, Noble. <laughs> coffee for 27 <laughs> days. <laughs> and the oh thing is, is God. that the idol was only good for two rounds. Mm -hmm. So, like, do you think you're going to be in yeah. more risk next week after you were already successful at taking out one of them? I guess there was no chance that we're splitting the... Uh, this plan is foolproof. Foolproof. Genius. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Boy, so sad. Um, and then, ultimately, we get to the... the okay, the reveal of it's 5-5. Five, five. We're going to go back for the one vote. And then the winner of Survivor is Wendell. And uh, Laurel gets put in that, in that spot. Um it's a wild reunion show. Uh, I believe the reunion show on uh, Paramount Plus is 16 minutes long. Yeah. Uh, I didn't notice this in HHH, so I don't know if it's, it's the case. Uh, Jeff does not have a seat anymore. Jeff is going to do the reunion standing. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's not enough time. There's 16 minutes. There's the man has time. to we're be gonna, mobile. We're, we're moving around. We're going because, around. We're going, you know, we're going. <laughs> jury, final three. Eric. <laughs> We've James. got 16 minutes and we're going to get to uh, like uh, whoever we're going to talk to in Survivor Ghost Island. We're also going to get to uh, James Clement, Eric Reichenbach, Kevin Hart, and give you the David versus Goliath preview in 16 minutes. <laughs> And get that vote from that child because, of course, we got to stick course. with it and have the right. child cast a vote. Yeah. Key content. Yeah, you can yeah. see Jeff whispering, right, Wendell down. You can see yeah, it I right in it. the footage. I saw it. Oh, uh, <laughs> it's just like, no uh, pressure. Eh, to, poor Eric and James. Like, here oh my are two God. idiots that made the biggest mistakes in their lives. We're going to oh. rehash it out on live television again. Oh. And again. I feel like they brought out James and Eric to drag Laurel some more. It was like, <laughs> all right, James and Eric, get out of here. Get out of here. All right. All right. You two for years. We've talked about you're the biggest idiots that every time we make a list, you could see it. You two uh, total morons. Uh, you totally blew it. But I have to say, at least you made a big move. So oh. you're forgiven. You're forgiven. The new worst move is not making a big move. So <sighs> what no an longer, idiot. You're, you're free. You're free. Uh, it was just, I felt like it was more piling on Laurel. 
It it definitely did feel a little bit like rehabilitation. Doesn't humor have to set in eventually? Oh, but see, you made it to the final five both times you played. So, wow, what a great player you are, you know, kind of thing. And then, yes, of course, it's all about making the big yeah. move. At least you made a well, move. And, and then they went to James. Like, all right, James, I, I got to know. And James like, well, actually, I don't watch the show anymore. But that's <laughs> it was <laughs> too challenging to watch the show. And Jeff is trying so hard. And James is like, no, I won't watch. I won't watch it anymore. <laughs> I won't watch it. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Uncomfortable. Okay. Michael Yerger. Oh, all right, I gotta go. Like, Michael Yerger. Get over here. Get over here. This guy. Wow. <laughs> Talk about how much you love James some more. Come on. Yeah. Never had a guy like this. Ugh, amazing. Can you believe it? Uh, they really, they really did they talk to anybody else besides Michael Yerger in the final and Kellen, I think. Kellen and the final three. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they Chris talked Noble. to okay. did they talk to Wendell? Oh yeah, they, they yeah, they talked to Chris <laughs> Noble and then he's like welling up talking about his mom and the MS walk. And then <laughs> Jeff Bro's like, ah, and that's great. And now we're moving on. Yeah. But they didn't even really spend a lot of time with Wendell. Uh the, you know, they went to uh, I think the quick, quick hit with, uh, I mean, they basically asked him about like the tie vote, um, mm -hmm. about how do you feel that Laurel was going to, uh, be, and again, Wendell gives the Eric Reichenbach necklace to Laurel at the final five. And I did feel like that that was redemption for the Eric Reichenbach necklace where that Eric gave that necklace away. Wendell gave it at the final five to Laurel, uh, but it ends up then having the opposite effect is when, when Eric gets voted out of the game that, that he's given the gift to a, to a woman uh, like Eric did, but instead then, she's the nice to vote to win. Mind yes, blown. It's, yeah, it is. I never even thought about it like that, but yeah. Wow. That's symbolic. He and, reversed and the curse. He reversed, the curse. he reversed the curse. He reversed the curse. Wow. Successful <laughs> curse reversed. I did a great job. I, I came away very, very impressed with uh, when I like, I like Dom and Wendell were both great, but mm -hmm. I, I feel like that Wendell is underrated as a winner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, I don't, I don't know. I think he was properly rated. I think like when he was going into Winners at War, a lot of people had him on the board to take the whole thing again, right? Like a lot of people were high on Wendell coming into Winners at War, right? Yeah. I, I guess maybe not for this specific game. Maybe just because like it was such a close thing between Dom and Wendell. So but I, I definitely at the time and uh, from the casuals perspective as well, there is a lot of Dom was robbed, Dom was robbed, Dom was robbed. And I think that's because the edit just... Whenever there's even, you know, those, um, I don't know, I can't remember edgically what they're called, but the shot of where Jeff Probst is just talking about the challenge, shot of Dominic, shot of Dominic. Like Dominic just gets so much visibility, plus all the crazy moves and things that he's doing. Right, right. because the audience is like the first five people on the jury. That, I mean, Do exactly. that, the, the split, the people that sat on the, sat on the couch and were just watching the moves. Uh, they were the Dominic votes and the people mm -hmm. that were sort of like, uh, like in the mix a, a little bit more and sort of like knew like a little bit more what was happening socially. Uh, they voted for Wendell. And I think then also looking back with a really critical eye, knowing that Wendell ultimately wins. Also, you can look for those little subtle things that Wendell's doing along the way that I think really make him a super strong player. Brings Seabass a shell. The con. He yes. He saved that shell. And Seabass was, was so, oh. so stinky still. It was so, he carried that stinky shell. He carried shell. that stinky oh. shell. <laughs> it was wild though that okay, Jeff Hart uh, Jeff Probst uh brings out uh Kevin Hart at the wow. uh final tribal council or the the, the reunion <laughs> show. And this is just it's so wild uh to talk about TKO was coming back. I was looking for Tyler in the uh, TKO promo, he was nowhere to be found. Oh, I forgot that was a thing. Oh my god! <laughs> and a spoiler for Big Brother, right? Boom true. shot. Yes. <laughs> Boom shot. Like, I, so I remembered that they went to Kevin Hart and did the TKO promo, but I had completely forgotten it was Ghost Island. And so this was such a joy when they were like, "And Kevin Hart." And I was, yes. Yeah. Kevin, <laughs> so stupid. Uh, that courtesy uh, Kevin Hart from TKO. Boom shot. Yes! Oh, Boom amazing. Shot. Oh, Boom shot. Well, yes. Okay. Uh, Kevin Hart fine. came out and pretended that he was like, uh, wait, we're like, uh, wait, this isn't real. Like, I thought we were really on an island. Like, uh, it's like, no, this is like, uh, um, like uh, he's really trying to sell the bit. Hilarious. Yeah. Bit. Hilarious bit. I was rolling. I was rolling. He was like, oh, the, where are the palm trees? <laughs> this is a studio? Wait. <laughs> Love that. Not really on an 
the Survivor finale reunion, like, does it, it does not really have like the lifelike, realistic appearance of that you're on an island. No, it's no. It's, it's clearly a stage, yeah. Kevin. <laughs> yeah, get Kevin. it together. Get it together. Kevin. Overrated. Come on. Come on. Yes, he came out shot out of a cannon, uh, mm-hmm. Kevin Hart for the, for the finale. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, I have I have questions I have polls uh but uh like I was just say that uh, Ghost Island I I really on a binge this was fun it's fun I mean I mean I'm always of the mind of like survivors like pizza got, right guys survivors like pizza even like boring survivor still good survivor guys so uh, I mean I I I I had a lot of fun rewatching this so you I mean, hi- unapologetically moments of the season what'd you say highlight enough of the fun moments of the season like were there any sort of uh like uh funny things that we missed talking about i think no i think like we we, we talked about like the sea bass one liners which i love like you know i i think there are a lot of good character moments i don't like talking about a lot of specific moments but like there is one moment like in, uh in ponderosa that we haven't really talked oh, about yes um uh chris about chris chris noble Chris Noble, uh, famous wordsmith, uh, uh, featured on recent uh, outlet uh, outplay out wit out list podcast, yeah. um, had a rap video in Pon- made a rap video on Ponderosa, um, yes. and uh, you know I thought it would be fun because for me listening to that podcast, uh, it, it it made me a little angry because uh, about the. Game- Musical moments the other day with uh, Mike Bloom and Jenny Autumn. Right. And, you know, uh, Gabriel Cade, I'm going to throw some Gabriel shade. Like, Chris Noble is not even a top five worst, like, Survivor. Like, rappers from Survivor, there are, there are at least five worst rappers. Gabriel Cade at the top of that list, for, 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 for real. Um, Chris Noble, there is, some, there is lyricism here. All right. There is lyricism here. It's very subtle. Uh, but yeah. I, I figured like maybe we could talk talk it through because like I feel like a lot of people are sleeping on Chris Noble here, especially okay. Wendell. Yes. The the beautiful thing about this also is that it's not just the one isolated moment, right? So of course we have the famous Wendell confessional, but you have all of these little elements of Chris Noble rapping leading up to this moment. So you have him in confessionals being like, this ain't pay-per-view, it's a free show. Okay, Chris, you go. And it just culminates with this beautiful, beautiful uh, creation on Ponderosa. Yeah. Uh, and you know, there's like... At, le- at least when Chris Noble is rapping, he's trying to make some cohesive sense of what he's saying. Not like this Gabriel he- Cade fellow who is like tribal immunity, whatever, dude. I, I hate yeah. the free yeah. word association. <laughs> that was trash. Right. It's trash. Race here, Gabriel Cade. Get it. Or- yeah. Okay. Anyways, that was also years ago. You know, it's fine. Yes. All right. But uh, you want to talk about Chris Noble's rap? Do you? Do, I mean, do you? I don't like, I'm just no, what do you got? Okay, so I'm just gonna go line by line. We can discuss. Okay, go like okay. It. So starts off, Bula Fiji. Okay, we know yeah. Bula. We know Bula. Educational. Yeah. Uh, feeling like a boss as I'm island hopping. Okay, it's it's kind of filler. Not good. The buzz is so real. It's like we bottle popping. This is potentially ghost written by chase rice uh <laughs> got his buzz back uh okay now here's where it gets real okay like he was he was hanging out a lot with dominic okay poker player listen listen to this okay choppers on deck their hearts flush when they drop in call a dude's bluff when they body flop in okay now there's at least like six poker related words in there okay yeah this is a <laughs> yeah but that's out- all it is phil no, no, it's no, poker no, no, related no. words wait 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 wait, wait, wait 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 like what ryan is- and chrissy in the phone you, you're just saying things <laughs> what what is body flopping what does I that thought, mean i, no I was idea. thinking like body surfing that's what i would think too okay but what does that mean that okay so if somebody's body surfing what it, why is he calling their bluff i don't hmm. like 
Okay. Anyways, I'm trying to defend this and also unraveling it at its very core. Okay. Uh, check my back from that blind side. They say Navidi strong, but they change with the high tide. Clear diss at Kellen Beck told right to, you know, Navidi strong, Navidi strong. He's, he's dropping these sub tweets in the wraps. Okay. It's very cool. The dark side, the low V with the black i don't even know if that's right black black die okay the do, the domino effect cost me a million and a swell eye yeah i think he's referencing dominic's shirt i think it's a, a v-neck uh, right it's black yeah okay so wait did he did dominic oh the domino effect domino dominic domino, domino effect, domino yeah. effect. yes the mm -hmm. temple tapper, Rob. Okay. Uh, okay. Also, did he get punched? Who punched him? A swell eye, like not like a. Oh, it's swell. Wow, it's good, but like swollen black eye. I don't know. Whatever. Phil, he's, you're try he's trying. To be he's Phil, trying. He's trying. He's trying. He's trying. He's trying. Okay. Hmm. Now this is the part. This is the hook. Everybody sing along. Everyone knows this. Yeah. Live in the dream on Ponderosa. Yeah. Swung for the fences. I call it Sammy Sosa. Now, Rob. Yes. You're a baseball guy. Sure. Who's Sammy Sosa? He's a uh, famous baseball player for the Chicago Cubs. Uh, had a legendary chase of uh, the home run title against Mark McGuire in 1998. Right. Would you say he is somebody who has once or twice swung for the fences? Hmm. Yes. Bars. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, we juice all day. And toss the corks in the roasters. Uh, probes on deck they feel the burn. Wait, are, they, wait. Are, they, are they drinking juice at Ponderosa? I it's mean, in a juice cleanse. Probably a no, no. It's probably a cocktail. You know, they're probably getting a little silly on Ponderosa. Mm. Okay, like you know, it's a very uh, devastating experience to get voted out of a, a game. Of, like a lot this. of juice with the bottle service. Mm -hmm. Right, that right, explains right, right. the corks. Also, yeah. maybe they're yeah. mimosas. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Oh, Sosa. See? Wow. Sosa? Yeah. Sosa. Leon, oh, okay. you should be ghostwriting. Wow. You should have ghostwriting. Yeah. Uh okay. Uh probes on deck feel the burn when he hosts you. Mm. Now you really I, host you. you're right. This okay. I'll, I'll, stay with me. Okay. This is okay. this gets good. This gets good. <clears throat> uh so <laughs> light, <laughs> life is a beach as I sit my corona. Okay. Mm, okay. A little ahead of his time, yeah. Right? He's mm -hmm. fortune telling. Okay. Uh, survivor on my mind. That's why I Ponderosa. Okay. He's thinking. Fi kind of fire. Kind I of fire. I know. Low key. Like, you know, I mean, you know, uh, it's it's right there, but like, you know, he's the only person who's ever going to write that besides maybe, you know. Anyways, it'll toast you, maybe bloat you. Now, what is it? What is this? Mimosas. He wrote this in five minutes. He wrote this in five minutes. But yeah, you know what? what? Hey, Chris, uh, we're coming in with the camera crew. Uh, is that rap going to be ready? Like, oh, uh, give me, give me, uh, yeah. like, twenty more seconds. Yeah. Does, no, no, no. Does anybody have a rhyming dictionary? Well, no. See, and then at, 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 at that point, I think he's just looking around. He's like, "What okay. rhymes with toast?" Yeah, yeah. he's got. Uh, Corona. Okay. Roast. Uh, there's okay, a roast. We're eating a lot of beef. Uh, okay. Oh, wait, does he say shh? Okay, these lyrics, I don't know if he says shh. Yeah, he does. Oh, he does? As, as someone who listened to this song far too much when it initially yeah. uh, came out, yes, I can do, tell you that is indeed true. Have you listened to Tariq Myers' Hot Sauce more or this song? <laughs> <laughs> this by choice, Tariq Myers' Hot Sauce by force. <laughs> All right, yeah. well, From I mean, Kuya Zanvakili. <laughs> talk about bars. Anyways, uh, bottle <laughs> service all day. Burn your mouth off. Burn yeah, your mouth off. burn your mouth off. Uh, blame it on the le uh, 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 lemon twist lemon vodka. Twist. See, uh, uh, lyricist. It's great. Okay, bottle service all day. We stay VIP, serve the finest lobster, like Seb on day three. Seb's his friend. Yes, got it. Wasn't okay. in the show. So. Okay, yeah, whatever. No, never referenced. Yeah, had no honestly, idea what he saw you out. Honestly, we're kind of falling off here. We're kind of falling off. I just wanted yeah. to, I just wanted to, okay. Uh, things get hot, take a paddle to the sea, and lock the door to freedom, like my Florida key doors have keys. Florida Key, cool, very, very good. Uh, on the jet ski, the vitamin D. What happens on the island stays in Fiji. Um, okay. Vinaka, vinaka, yeah. Vin and yes. don't, don't you can't forget the vinaka. Don't just, knock it. Don't knock the vinaka. Part of being a good rapper is knowing um, 
ad libs, baby. You gotta have good ad libs. You gotta have yeah. like lots of hype and, and stuff in the back. It's not about what you're saying. It's about what you're shouting in the background. All right. Thank you very much. This has been my book report on Chris Noble's. Uh, well done. Yeah. Well. Thank you very much. God Thanks bless. Job. All right. Let's take some questions from uh, the uh, listeners of uh, the podcast. Of course, every week uh, we get submissions from the listeners and uh, we go through. Uh, Jared V says, how would you rank Adam and Wendell among survivor duos? Are they the best? Hmm. Who else we got? Who else we got? Just off off the dome. Stevie I mean, JT, Colby okay. Tina. Mm -hmm. They're certainly the most evenly matched. Yeah. <laughs> numerically speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, right. I mean, it's it's pretty iconic. I think when people think about Ghost Island and and especially because of the tie, right? They, it's always about their relationship, their relationship, their relationship. I would say Token Sheens is probably the closest season where it's all about that relationship it's about right. jt and steven jt and steven by the way uh we'll uh get to some of our questions here tonight and then the rest i will get to over the weekend the great will from america will join me on the mm. patron uh feedback show to answer uh these questions and more uh over the next uh, couple of days we'll do that on friday Rob's website.com uh, slash patron. If you want to check that out in uh, every week, we'll do uh, an extra feedback show to answer more questions. Okay. Um, John in DC said, I asked you previously at the time if this season would play better on a rewatch because Dom and Men Wendell's March to the end uh, is an all time great story arc and there wouldn't be week to week frustrations or no one resisting. Josh said, no, you said the lack of anyone overcoming adversity hurts. What do you think? I was wrong. <gasps> wow. What? Very big of you, Rob, to admit that. Yeah. Uh, I agree. I mean, I agree. I think I think knowing the outcome is uh it actually kind of helps. I don't know. Because yeah. like, I mean, it's it's annoying to watch, but like once you know that Wendell's gonna win, it's like, okay, well, like let's look at what he did well, mm -hmm. and then and it's and it's it's more fun to watch that way. Yeah, because I think that. A lot of times with Survivor, like we could sort of like see in the edit, okay, this is probably where it's going. And then to do like a week of podcasts, like, do you think Laurel is going to flip next week? It's like, uh, well, probably not. Like, uh, <laughs> like sometimes it's just, there's yeah. uh, not a million things to talk about. And this was a season where it was top heavy in terms of like, okay, we only care, know about Laurel, Donathan, Dom and Wendell and Kellen. And it's like, okay, well, uh, do you think that Angela and Seabass and Chelsea are going to get together and make it? No, like, no, we have no idea who these people are. They're not getting to the end. We can list right. three facts about them. Total. That's not individual. Total. Yeah, so and if like, that oh. did happen, it would be way worse. It would be worse. I the think. Only question every single week was, wait, what do you think? Would Laurel flip next week? Yeah. 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 But then and, the flip and that happens was why... and I'm like, oh. But see, like, that's part of the reason why I think for the B&B &B especially, it was still fun because we talk yeah. less about the strategy. We just have fun with the silliness. And so that's why I remembered the season so fondly. So now coming back from maybe a, even a little bit more of a strategic perspective, I can see how frustrating that would have been. But it is it is nice on a bench. It is nice on a bench. Okay. Um, this is an interesting question. I don't know if it has ever been asked before. Uh, Charlene wants to know if Laurel and Donathan did take out Wendell and Dominic, who wins, uh, Laurel or Donathan? <laughs> Laurel, probably. Who's if they made it to them? the end there, who's probably who's with, with them? Who's th with them? Uh, so, all right, Laurel, Donathan, and uh, uh, like Angela, yeah. Angela, yeah, okay. <laughs> Okay, way better season actually. Now you, you, you mentioned. Uh, no, I mean I don't know. I yeah, I, I guess I think you're right. I think you're right. Unfortunately, uh, even though I see Laurel doing a lot more of the heavy lifting in that department, I yeah. think Donathan is just more of a. Yeah, a, a Donathan visible... has a sadder story where even right. Sia wants to give him money in the finale just for being there. I think right. also if Donovan doesn't have that kind of meltdown towards the end, also it makes him much more palatable if he's able to like make the move and then be able to go to the end. Then there's really no negatives there. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Also, the jury was too mean to Laurel. Uh, that they yeah. were like they, yes. they opened up. Like, they were like if Dominic and Wendell sitting there. They they opened up the final tribal council and are like going into like uh, Laurel's like yeah like these guys wouldn't have got here without me. I saved them. And they're like no you didn't Laurel. Shut up Laurel. <laughs> like, yeah. Not oh, mean to Laurel. It was like it was uh, hard like did you yeah. know that they were gonna win if they got to the end? Like ah. Uh... 
Okay. Uh, yeah. This is Kobayashi Maru for for Laurel. No good. Uh, no good outcome. All right. Um, Michael M says, "What was the best and worst Ghost Island visit?" Uh, we talked about the best one is probably Chris Noble. Uh, any calls on the worst Ghost Island visit? It's Jenna, right? <sighs> Jenna's was know. boring for sure. Kellen says no, which was sad, but she, at but least she, like, and then she plays, goes the second time and says yes. Right. right. Um, Redemption. Seabass's was so stupid because he had three out of four chance to get something. It was like Ghost yeah. Island was just like uh, oh. going out of business sale. We're just handing out stuff. <laughs> and also, <laughs> Seabass's was so stupid because he goes to he goes to Ghost Island at the at the final seven and he gets. You have gotten the uh, the extra vote that Michaela didn't see that got used against Michaela and then got it turned into a, uh, a extra vote at Tribal Council. And then Kellen in this season misplayed the extra vote. <laughs> you wrote back a vote from your own season. Like, stop it. Yeah. Not a thing. It's stop amazing. It. Do not <laughs> stop. Do not it really start reaching and put it into circulation. Ugh. I was always I was hoping after that happened that Donna or uh, Dominic's fake shell idol somehow made its way to Ghost <laughs> Island and became a real idol somehow. Stop it. There's Just no stop rules. Idol back in the same season. No rules. <laughs> oh my okay. God. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, Tubby Lunchboxes. Uh, who do you think would be candidates for a potential second chances two uh, season? Well, you know, let's talk about all stars here of who should come back. This is one of the most recent seasons. Uh, so I do think that there are a lot of people here viable for second chances. Um, Dom Abate has to play again. No question. Yes. 100%. Yeah, no question. Yeah. You're waiting too long. Yeah. Um, yeah. I Laurel, agree. I don't think, uh, I, I mean, I don't think that they are looking for her to play again. And I don't think she wants to play again. Her life is fine. I mean, yeah. I mean, I I completely understand that, especially yeah. from fan reception and yeah. Okay, and and stop me if you're disagreeing on anything. Uh, no. Angela, probably no, thank Rob, you. Rob, come on, come on. Uh, all right, what about Donathan? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, it's hard, right? I mean, I think that like they might bring him back just because I I think he was revered by the, yeah. the casuals for sure. Well, when they did the Survivor at 40 special, like there was a whole feature on Donathan. Survivor mm -hmm. loves Donathan. They do. I, I mean, I, I can understand why he, you know, uh, but I just don't know if it's the right move for him. I'm just imagining he comes back and now all of a sudden he's the villain or something like that. He just he completely changes right. the public perception of him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It happens. Um, all right. Kellen. I would do, I, I mean, I'm into a Kellen. Winner of Survivor Sequester. Winner of Survivor Sequester. That's right. Yeah. I, guess I mean, I would social. be interested in seeing yeah. her again. I, I yeah. don't think she's necessarily the top of my list, but if someone was like, yeah, Kellen, I'd be like, yeah, okay, yeah. Kellen. Okay. I agree. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I, I want to see. Like, no doubter right after the season. I'm not sure uh, right. as much anymore. I think she's still up for it. I, and I want to see what she does in a different situation, right? Because it was just sort of like the one narrative and she was going through a different, uh, you know, a certain point in time in her life. And so now with a couple of years afterwards, I would like to see what Kellen looks like as yeah. a player. I think that it really, it would be interesting to see her play again. Cause I kind of feel like that this first time around where uh, Jeff is like, uh, Kellen, like, what is this like? Like Jeff, you know, it's like we're at an amusement park and a roller coaster, and then this is the part where we're upside down. Like she's like such a, like a nice, but like I kind of feel like she'd be a little more jaded second time around. I hope so. <laughs> Jeff, what do you think it's like right now? What do you think? Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, she was such a go-to person uh, at all the tribal councils. Um, Michael Yerger, again, you would think uh, that if you would ask me the night of it, like, oh, Michael Yerger, he's probably going to play in the next season. Mm -hmm. like for sure the nice. uh the andrea uh male andrea i don't know mm -hmm. like a young player who they're just so excited about they want to see back but now i have n neither seen nor heard from michael so who knows maybe if they do millennials versus gen z Ooh. okay they got yeah. julia su such a snosk Suck sorry oh Klasky. my god Sokolowski. you get uh will wall you get is she a millennial Keith. now 
No, 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 Gen Z, well, right? Oh, actually, don't I don't you know. always have been a millennial? Wait, wait, or do you wait, like grow into your millennialhood? Right? Right. So at the time, she would have okay, been she was like, she was like 19, like uh, five years ago. Right. I, so I she'd know. probably be a millennial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm a cusper. I'm a cusper. I'm 26. Yeah. I'm a cusper. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Mike you know. Uh I don't know. I, thought, I, I, I honestly, I thought he was. I thought he was super scrappy. Uh, you know, I mean, maybe kind of, you know, uh, cookie cutter, whatever. Uh, Twenty four years know, old, Julius Sarkolaski. Young guy, whatever. But like, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I really thought he fought for his life a, a lot in this game. He didn't give up. You know, I, I mm -hmm. like that in, in a player. Yeah. So I mean, I wouldn't be okay. mad. I'd be All right, Chris Noble. Will Chris Noble play again. No, he's busy. I, I know he I, he doesn't have an Instagram account anymore as someone who used to follow him on Instagram. So I don't know. Why? Why he down? Yeah, he just took it down. One day it was gone. I don't think there was no like scandal or anything like that. Just one day yeah. it was gone. Uh, I like to think he's preparing for another Survivor season, but yeah, who knows? Yeah, um, I think he's preparing an EP. So yeah, watch out for that. Dude, That's what I ghost. Yeah, uh, Bradley. Will Bradley play again? <laughs> oh. I mean, I want it. Obviously, probably not. But mm -hmm. well, I would. I would watch. I mean, I don't know. Whatever. Well, okay. so Bradley. Speaking of Bradley, Bradley, and I forgot to bring this up earlier. Had one of my favorite sort of like off-screen moments of the season, which is where it was on Bradley had posted something on Instagram, and a woman had replied to him and said, "Oh, you remind me of my son." And then Bradley's like, "Oh, thanks." And then the woman goes, "That wasn't a compliment. He's in prison." <laughs> and, and it's just like i'm sorry what oh Did that really just happen can you imagine Yikes. bradley in prison crazy <laughs> i don't i can't i cannot imagine bradley being in prison like what is he is he like he complains all whatever. the time yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> i don't know i'm like i'm a sucker for like returning season like You'd have freaking like I don't know, like literally like a th third boot from any season. I'd be like, oh so my like, god, yeah. returning season. Yeah. Oh. All right, what about Jacob Derwin? <sighs> it's not like it's not like if he was first boot. If he was, yeah. If he was first boot, then it's like he has an in, right? But he was second boot, so I don't know if he's gonna. Have, yeah, and, and, maybe, and like you said, he probably won't do it. So mm. okay, all right. You want to hear some of the uh, poll? Uh, we do our weekly survey of the listeners. I would yes, love to. let's do it. All right. Uh, let's check out what the uh, listener said about Survivor Ghost Island. And then we'll tell you what we're going to do next week on uh, the 31st best season of all time. And so uh, we have a bunch of uh, survey questions that we ask our listeners. Uh, and... We are going to uh, read you the results as tabulated by the tabulator, Kurt Clark. Um, let's see. Uh, we asked people, did you rewatch the season this week in preparation? Uh, so it tells you a little something about our survey uh, listeners. What, what do you think that uh, they said? How many percentage of the people that answered the survey rewatched the season? Uh, Not that many. <laughs> uh, less than half. Yeah, less than half for sure. Uh, but nineteen percent of okay. the people that are in the survey are watching the season. That's pretty. Okay, that's I mean, not, passing that's a wide net. Very high. I was going to say like ten. So yeah. that, that's passing good. Passing a wide net. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm assuming that more than like a hundred people answered the survey. All right. So, <laughs> who in this season is the MVP? Like, how do you give it to I, one person? Ranking <laughs> like, is arbitrary. And deterred, yeah, and it's arbitrary and reductive, and deterred, guys. Uh, we can't do that. I don't know. I, I mean, my like, personal MVP is Chris Noble, but that's just right. because of all the other meme moments, not right. because like I have a different scale than everybody. Like right. I'm gonna always say Chris Noble. Right. So I mean, was it was it Dominic? I think it's Dominic. Was, it was Dominic, and and yeah. it was actually Dominic by a lot. I was very surprised. Uh, Fifty-five point uh, nine percent of the votes said Dominic mm. was the MVP. Only thirty-one percent said Wendell was the MVP. Wrong answer, everybody. Fifty-fifty. That's it. Somebody 50, got three percent of the votes. Can you guess who it is? Who did? Wait, who One was? person got three percent of the vote. That was the third highest. Oh, oh that was the third highest. Yes, was three percent. Oh wow! And it's Chris Noble, right? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what one-time player would you most like to come back and see play again? Uh, 
Dominic? Dominic. Yeah. Right? Uh, sorry. <laughs> I feel like that was easy. Out. That was so easy. Yeah. Second. Second. Kellen? It was Kellen. 10.9%. For Kellen, and then nice. third was Michael Yerger, six percent. Yes, that Michael yeah. Yerger bump. <laughs> what name on the list did you look at and say, "Wait, who's that?" Okay, uh, for me, well, it's Chelsea. It's gonna be Chelsea, right? Well, no, no because I think that's a big game for because the people, meme. people remember Chelsea because she wasn't on. So I'm gonna say Morgan. Ricky, I would no? say Stephanie Gonzalez. Oh, neither. No, Phil. I, I thought Phil was gonna get talked out of it. It was Morgan Ricky. Oh, Morgan! Because uh, uh, that happened to me. I was like, "Who is Morgan Ricky?" And then yes. I forgot she was like a big, big. Well, her travel was huge. Kim mm -hmm. right. Yeah, I remember because Mike and I both made her our winner pick, and yeah. then we're both like devastated. She went out there. Eighteen point five percent for Morgan Ricky mm -hmm. Libby. I am the lipster uh, mm -hmm. that she was uh, second with uh, 12.7% and Stephanie Gonzalez mm -hmm. with 12.6. Uh, Who's the most underrated player on the season? Ooh. I, uh, I, I want to think that like the Laurel fans came out and they were like, look, Laurel's underrated, Laurel but I just snapped. don't know if there's enough of them to do okay. that. Uh, I will, I will, no, I'll, I'll, I'll say Laurel. No, I'll say it. Whatever. It's fine. Yeah. You're right. 21.7% oh! said Laurel. Come on, uh, Laurel fans. Just Come under 20% said Kellen. And 13.7% okay. uh, said Michael Yerger. I wonder if that's that same <laughs> same people. Okay. want to see him play again. Underrated. Okay. The for, for the best pre-merge boot. I remember everybody talking about Stephanie at the time, but you also have a lot of competition with Jacob there. Mm -hmm. So I, I'll go with Jacob. I just, not in the top three. Personally, for personally for me, I'm gonna have to say it's Bradley Kleige. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Bradley Kleige. He gets second with 26.3%. Okay, uh it was Stephanie Johnson yeah. with okay. uh, I'm butchering everyone's last name. That's I'm fine. So That's fine. James Lim was third. So uh oh, okay. Justice for James. Okay. Justice um, for James. The merge tribe name. Does anybody remember what it is? Navulu or something? La it's Lavita. Lavita. Oh, okay. Not, yeah. Not Levita BB can for, uh, sorry. Bad yes, yes. Move on. Yeah. All right. Bad. What a pull. Um, that was rated, uh, 5.5 5 out of 10, uh, right, right in the middle. Uh, hmm. okay. So this is an interesting question out of the 40 seasons. Where would you rank the winner of this season? Uh, one being the top 40 being the worst. Where do you think the average was? Hmm. I think probably somewhere in the middle, I think because of like the fact that it was a tied vote and you had Dominic, who was such a strong player as well. I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to price is right. I'm going to go like smack in the middle. I'm going to go 20. 20. All right, Philly, uh, higher or lower? Uh, wait, how, how does price is right work? I go 21 and win. <laughs> yeah. Well, wait, 21. It's 21 or 19. Right, which you, one do you want? You, you think, you oh, think that, okay. oh, oh, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah I'll, I'll, go, I'll go 19. I'll cut her off 19. 19. Uh, yeah, give it to Phil. It's uh, mm -hmm. 18 and a half. Okay. Um, that's way too low for when I haven't updated my winner rankings for the 30s, but mm -hmm. I mean, People are are factoring in. Oh, Wendell w went out at the merge in uh, Winners at War. That when did Wendell make a mistake the entire game? I mean, that he basically like you know. Uh, it, people used to say that JT played a, a perfect game. Other than the Morgan Ricky vote, well, Wendell didn't make a mistake the entire game. I think he didn't make a mistake, and he was having to pick up Dominic's mistakes, like clean up his yeah, mistakes. And, so. and he had a great partner in in Dominic, and so mm -hmm. that that sort of probably like uh, like inflates what, how we think. Like Dominic is probably a better player than he might actually be because of like uh, the halo effect from Wendell, and, and and Wendell probably came in as a little bit better because of everything that Dominic brought to the table. Like sort of like it's a mastermind of two heads are better than one, but still. Like a too low on Wendell to be the mm -hmm. 18th, 18th best player. Stop it. So yeah. 18th best winner. Get out of here. Okay. Hey. Um, I think he's right around the top 10. Top 10? Yeah. 10 ish. Yeah. I think yeah. I, I would say probably around like the like 10, tw 10, 12 area. Yeah. I mean, if you yeah. talk about dominant gameplay, right. And then you look at, yeah. at everything he's done. Yeah. I could see that. People are just too low on Wendell because uh, Dominic got five votes. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, he had, had to go to overtime to win. Yeah, but but he played a great in a, in a different yeah. season. Yeah. Uh, you know, he might have got one nine nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I could see it. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean that if you're looking at like uh like st- strategy, he has uh like he had like a, a lot of good plans. He found idols. He uh like su- he was able to do survival stuff, make the fire, uh, win challenges. Yeah, yeah, that's actually that's a great point. Social relationships. So where's the hole in his game? I think because it, like people forget that he also had an idol, that he won those individual immunities, that he won the final fire making challenge for whatever that's worth. He has all of these other sort of flashy accolades. He gave away his immunity idol because he didn't freaking need it. Like that's amazing. Yeah. That's flashy. It's just compared it, yeah. to Dominic. Forget mm-hmm. winners at war. What else do you want from your winner? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Come yeah. on, people. Uh, you're spinning <laughs> facts. Exactly. Like Chris Noble, wake up, Canada, right, Phil? Wake up, Canada. Wake up, Canada. All right. Thank you. Is this season too low, too high, or just right? Too low, too high, or just right? I must said. I must say the answer. Obviously, I think it's too low. Hmm. Yeah. But I don't I'm know all, if I agree with everybody else. I'm also a too low guy, but I'm also judging based on you know uh, biases. So yeah. I know, like I, I, I can't, I can't, my can't be taken seriously. I can't be taken mm-hmm. seriously. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the audience said that this was too low. Forty-four percent, thirty-six percent said uh, just right, and too high. Nineteen point five percent. Okay. All right. Let me look at my season rankings. I haven't looked at this today yet. Of uh, where would I put this? Uh, but I think this is going to be high. The, uh, that for me, it's between yes. this, this or the edge of extinction. What was? Well, let me just talk it through in my head for a second here. Uh, I feel like the edge of extinction really only had one boring episode, which was uh, like the the first time Rick Devins goes out. I think is kind of a snoozer. Uh, I would say this has a this has more boring episodes, but a more satisfying conclusion. Uh, I know. What do you th- what do you think, Phil? Rob, this is where uh, you factor in the Chris Noble effect, and you just push it right to the top, baby. Let's go! All right, say this. I'll say this was the best season I've watched. And and, and maybe maybe your mileage may vary on a on a first watch, but here on the binge. Like uh, it hit, it I know it's gonna happen. It I hits know it's on happen. a binge. It yeah. hits on a binge. It was fine. It was Tattoo fine. It on me. Yeah, yeah. That's so, cool. I yeah, mean, I think I think the edge is like overall a, a better cast. That if we're gonna go like uh like one one two, I think Edge of Extinction it might be, be an eighteen person cast. Also, I think. Um, but that being said. Like uh, or or maybe maybe it's twenty. I don't, I I don't I, the, the, don't ask me right now. Uh, but anyway, but like uh, so it's more top heavy on Ghost Island, but I think that when you walk away with uh, a Dom and Wendell tie, ultimately over uh, Chris Underwood coming back from the edge of extinction, I'll, I'll give me give me this. I mean, it's too iconic, two iconic finales for sure. But yes, oh my gosh, I'm so happy to hear this. This like warms my heart, Uh, especially when Chappelle, oh, you're not going to like it more than Heroes, Healers, Hustlers. Yeah. (laughs) I'm sorry. Uh, All right, well, let me give you my updated updated list of the nine seasons I've watched here in uh, 2020. Uh, The best season is Ghost Island. Boom. Woo! Best season. Uh, second best <laughs> season is the edge of extinction the third best season is survivor nicaragua the fourth best season was survivor heroes versus healers versus hustlers the fifth best season is survivor worlds apart the sixth best season is survivor one world the seventh best season was survivor island of the idols the eighth best season was survivor redemption island the ninth best season is survivor thailand and this is my biggest take of all survivor is better on a binge that that's why jeff probst is hiking up paramount mountain that's why it's a hit on Netflix. You're supposed to watch the whole season in two days. Who would have thought? <laughs> Who would have thought? You know, thought? The, the love survivor is to watch it in like th- th- three and a half days. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's the ideal viewing. And then the stuff that, that really that's like, wait, why did that happen? You just, you just move on. You don't think about that. 
Yeah, who cares? Come on. Nah, it was, that who was cares? an hour ago's problem. That's not, right. we're not still on this. Come on. Who cares? Okay. <laughs> who cares? You don't have a whole week to be salty about something. It's right. <laughs> Anything else to say about Survivor Ghost Island? I'm just happy to hear you be so positive about it, Rob, really. Like uh, a season that I I remember when we're talking about, oh, which one would I potentially be interested in? I was like, Ghost Island for sure. I for sure want to talk about Ghost Island wherever it ends up ranked because it just, it means so much to me. And this was such a pleasure to go through and to rewatch the whole thing and view it yeah. knowing the outcome. I, I didn't think I was going to be that high on it when I was going back to watch it. I was like, oh, okay. I, I felt like, oh, it's a better pre-merge than post-merge. But I actually enjoyed the post-merge a lot better. Good. Especially good, the good, post-merge good. on a binge. I, I don't know. It's just like, I really, like, I just think there's there's not a, a ton of meat on the bone in these modern seasons. And then when you're going through it so fast, it's like, you're just like, uh, like, uh, nom, 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 nom. Uh, mm -hmm. Fine. It's, it's, it's more, it's more filling. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, you I know, agree. just don't pay attention to what you're eating, whether or not you can taste it, and you're full. There you mm -hmm. go. Yeah, uh, maybe and this is the case to not make uh, seven podcasts about one episode of Survivor. But uh, that's, <laughs> wait, that's wait, 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 let's, um, not get, let's not get out of control here. <laughs> yeah, uh, hold uh, on. <laughs> okay, and also my final words on the season is, woo, so okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Woo. Okay. Um, we did get the preview for the uh, next season of Survivor. Uh, it was going to be uh, David versus Goliath. Got to see uh, our, our old friend uh, Christian Hubicki uh, back on the screen for a minute. But uh, that is life. not what we're going to talk about next week. That is not going to be the 31st best season of Survivor. Uh, Leon, do you have a guess? Oh my gosh. I feel like there's the, you know, the South Pacifics that are somehow slipping by that everyone uh, keeps wondering where they are. So. You know what? That's what I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with South Pacific. Let's see. Okay. Okay. Uh, South Sorry. Pacific. All right. Phil, who you got? Okay. So uh, I'm a people pleaser. I, I lurk the threads. Okay. The people want game changers, Rob. Where is it? They want okay. it. Okay. All right. That's, uh, that's Phil's pick. Uh, the 31st best season of Survivor. <laughs> Phil nailed it. It's Game Changers. Hey! <laughs> Game Changers. And we reverse the curse of Michaela's misplayed advantage. Yes. Oh yes. My Let's gosh. go. Next Wednesday, be back. Grace Leader and Asia Wells will join me as uh, we. I'm actually really looking forward to go back to Game Changers because it ended and I said, get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. I never want to. I don't want to watch it again. Um, but I think it'll be interesting to go back and look at it. I think so. No, uh, you know, fire making, right? There's, there's to, to go back to the, the old era of survivor before yeah. all of these things. It's not as recent. Mm -hmm. Um, it'll be interesting to see, like, I feel like that the, the, the really like, uh, the 31, 32, 33, 34, I've been looking forward to on, uh, this rewatch. Cause I feel like it's, it's like far enough away. It's like pre wand off that I'm interested in going in going back. Uh, like it's, it's not ancient. Like I was still doing the podcast during that time. So I'm looking forward to going back and seeing uh, what what is going on there with Survivor Game Changers. Uh, get to see Officer Sarah on her run. Advantage uh -huh. get in. Uh, uh, Tony. Sandra, you know, Tony, uh, the green oh, monster and, and uh, everything going on in Survivor. <laughs> Game changer. No, no, no. No. Okay. Uh, and then Hudson Kurkowski will be on the patron feedback show uh, next weekend as, and after next week, Hey, I'm 25% of the way there. Look at Let's you. Go. Oh, wow. Just it's burning through my it. My 10th survivor season of uh, <laughs> 2021. I'm not okay. All right. Yeah, we love it. Uh, Let's talk about what's coming up here on RHAP. All right. Uh, oh, while we were rec recording tonight, usually we had been live uh, the uh, past uh, seven or eight weeks. And tonight uh, it was Taryn Armstrong who was live with uh, Melissa Denny and Asia Welch who will join me uh, next week to talk about Survivor Game Changers. It was the Big Brother Canada 9 premiere. We can't wait to watch it. Uh, if you did, check out what uh, Taryn, Melissa, and Asia had to say about the night number one 
of Big Brother Canada. And then, uh, of course, uh, Taryn will be uh, back again for Thursday's uh, Big Brother Canada live after the episode. Of course, uh, earlier this week, I've been talking through 90 Day Fiance with the great Puya Zambakili. And uh, we had a lot of fun going through it. Was just, it was just uh, Puya and I solo this week, Liana. Aw, that's uh, a, a couple that I can root for as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, Phil, you ever check out 90 Day Fiance? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I got sucked in this season. We are a couple episodes behind, but it's the best show on TV. It's the yeah. best show on TV. Oh. I love it. It's my All favorite right. thing. It's my favorite. All right. All right. Uh, then, of course, uh, we've got uh, more coming up. Oh, this week on Talking with T-Bird, Todd Herzog uh, joined uh, T-Bird and myself. Uh, we certainly talked Survivor China, which is nowhere in sight over on our season countdown. We also talked about uh, Todd's battle that, against alcohol and uh, how he has uh, overcome it uh, on the latest Talking with T-Bird. Uh, check that out over at robiswebsite.com. And then, uh, of course, I had a great time on Tuesday Tuesday night, Mike Bloom and I did the uh, Paramount Mountain brand steal. If you remember during the Super Bowl, uh, <laughs> Jeff Probst and other intellectual property hiked up Paramount Mountain. We did a brand steal of, of a bunch of characters that were in those Super Bowl commercials. I highly recommend you check out one of my favorite brand steals of all time with myself and the co-host of the RHAP b, &B Mike Bloom. Check that out uh, over at robswebsite.com. Okay, and then, oh, I'll be back. I got to watch Tough as Nails uh, later on tonight. Phil Kogan, I believe, will be back with us this week. Uh, back with uh, Mike and Jess and myself as uh, we talk about episode number four already of Tough as Nails season two. All right? And then, beginning of a new month, great time to jump in. Check out everything we have going on over at robhasawebsite.com slash patron access to all of our patron uh, feedback shows the patron five for five and much more going on in our patron community over at rob has website.com slash patron and be sure to follow us on social media uh, of course we are tweeting uh so many things uh that are coming out of the show or with our twitter account at rob as a podcast or on instagram at rhap grams uh thank you so much for all of that all right so phil where can people check out more of what you're doing? Oh, wow, Rob. It's, it's funny you ask. Uh, I am currently riding the Twitch wave. Of, yeah, what are I'm, you twitching about? Uh, so basically, I'm just like, you know, streaming the eighth perspective of uh, the Among Us lobbies on Sunday. Uh, I've dabbled in playing some games. I don't know. I'm just I'm just kind of here for the ride right now. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not, I don't really have a plan. Um, but I do do a show with uh, Mr. Liana Boris every month. It's called The Banter Debrief. You can check that out on Puya's Twitch channel. The, the Banter Debrief? Yeah, you bet. So it's basically just like us having a therapy session for an hour, and then we talk about dumb stuff. Uh, we talked about Enzo's rap song. Yeah, uh, who's the therapist? Monday. Puya? Uh, yeah. No, I mean, yeah. I think it's a little bit about, we just share our feelings. So, you know, we're just very, uh, we're both very sensitive boys. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, it, it just comes out sometimes. It's it's fine. It's 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 really fun. He's a good pal of mine. You can check that out on his Twitch channel. Uh, also, Jenny and I. Uh, if you enjoyed my rap uh, breakdown of uh, Chris Noble's lyrics, we are going live on Jenny's Twitch channel, Jenny Autumn Twitch TV slash Jenny Autumn to break down other rap songs and just oh, okay. hang out. So that's also, what we're doing on Jenny. The other day that uh, you were potentially going to do Jenny's makeup on Twitch. Oh yeah. I mean, I'm definitely down for that. I, I this is the first time hearing of it, but like uh, I used to, you like when we uh, were long distance, I would be at work at four in the morning and she would be getting up for work and i would watch her do her makeup like we'd be on a video oh, wow. call while she's like getting ready a for work. very romantic story yeah so i learned a lot uh, i learned about uh blush i learned about uh <laughs> Is this the banter debrief eyeliner i learned about uh yeah basically uh anyways uh yeah and um, that's basically all i'm doing follow me on twitter at uh fillard and instagram at fillard and uh that's all my things i think I, oh and also i eat food seductively on only fans that's onlyfans.com slash fill you up. Thank you. All Wait, right. what's so funny, guys? Yeah. I don't know. How do I follow that, Phil? Yes. As um 
<laughs> I mean, I don't well, we really have as, as great a plug. I've been, yeah. handed, I've been handed a fact from uh, our own Sam Moore. It says uh, <laughs> that uh, statistically, uh, okay, next week we'll get to Game Changers. Uh, six of the bottom 10 seasons have been in the 30s. That is statistically unlikely if the, yes. uh, you know, the quality of the seasons was spread evenly. Yes. And, uh, and I think it's so interesting because everybody talks about, oh, the, the 20s, the middle of the 20s was of Survivor was so ages, bad. Right? Oh, the yeah. dark ages. Exactly. And so, so the fact that six are in, are in the 30s is wild yeah. to me. If you're, if you're following along at home, uh, that means uh, second chances, uh, co wrong, uh, millennial versus Gen X. So it looks like Survivor had a little bit of a run there of uh, 31, uh, like 30. 31, 32, 33, mm -hmm. uh, all, uh, and then a little bit of a, uh, that David versus Goliath is again, is the other outlier there. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, no, uh, that's interesting. Yeah, Rob, I, I don't know who these hooligans voting on these polls are, but my survivor experience over the last few years has been elevated because of RHAP. So, you know, you, Phil. This is, you know, let, let the haters hate on these seasons. I love the 30s because, you know, it brought me uh, it brought yeah. me all this enjoyment well, from the podcast. So. Well, thank you, Phil. And that's why we say it's the 31st best season of Survivor. Uh, mm, because exactly. uh, even, even uh, the ones that have been bad have been, you know, even this was the, 30, the 30 second best. And, and this was a lot of fun. All right, Liana, what do you have coming up? So you can, uh, first you can find me on Twitter at Liana RHAP, of course. Like uh, Rob mentioned at the start of the show, I'm doing the Drag Race podcast with Amon and Beth. We're doing both audio and video versions. So if you want to yes. check out the YouTube video, you can do that as well. And then Puya and I will be back in. Wait, wait, RuPaul uh, appears in the Survivor Paramount Mountain brand steel. <laughs> I have just started. I haven't finished the cast. RuPaul must be on the other tribe. I just RuPaul finished is the first a, one. RuPaul is on the Viacom tribe. Okay, yes, not on the CBS tribe. Okay, yes. great. Uh, excited, excited to to see who I'm going to end up rooting for there. I'm actually very excited to listen. But anyway, yeah, speaking of RuPaul, you can also check out our podcast. And then Puya and I will be back to talk about the Masked Singer, which will be back in one week. So then I think we're going to be doing a preview special once the costumes come out. There's one which is the russian nesting doll oh no idea how that's gonna work are there multiple people inside the costume i don't know it's always a wild super super fun super silly ride and i highly recommend checking that out as well yeah i wonder if it'll be like sort of like a big like wasted bottom and then like more of like a narrow top yeah i mean it look it looks like a nesting doll and mm -hmm. then but are there multiple dolls inside? I don't. I, I, are there multiple <laughs> masks the, on? Are there multiple take, people? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> take, Do we that's going to be a fun. It's going to take yeah, it off. Take, take it off. Multiple take times. It off. Yeah. Hey, yeah. For like a two minutes straight. Well, we'll yeah. find out. Okay. All right. Uh, of course, uh, and follow at uh, Liana RHAP as well. All right. Uh, this was really, really fun tonight. I, I hope that people are enjoying these podcasts. I've gotten a lot of great feedback about the series. So uh, hopefully if you're listening to this, you enjoyed uh, what we have going on. Looking forward to talking to the great Will from America over the weekend about additional feedback questions. Uh, so uh, lots of great stuff uh, coming up. So uh, check out everything on robinswebsite.com. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. Bye.